Hey there, brethren. We are coming at you with a very special podcast. In this podcast, we're going to be on this live show debunking and exposing Steven Anderson's film, Babylon USA. And the very first thing to understand about this movie is that the essentially the chief editor of it is Paul Wittenberger. And Paul Wittenberger, you know, claims to be a saved Baptist Christian. But if you actually look into his uh, IMD profile, it turns out that he's still working for Hollywood. You want to go ahead and uh, show that for us, Jeremy? Yep. Hey, here you go, Paul Wittenberger. Uh, you see, right, pretty wicked movies. I mean, Jason Statham and Crank, Race of Witch Mount Mountain. Uh, Green Hornet with Seth Rogen, probably one of the most disgusting individuals you've ever come across in Hollywood. Uh, and here you go, After the Tribulation with Steven Harrison. Oh, how about that? And uh, their other propaganda film, Marching to Zion, which is Jew hating uh, junk, Hell's Kitchen, um, New World Bible, New World Order Bible versions, The Night of, Te of the Templar. Hmm. Yeah, no connection there. Bad blood. Uh, and if you go down here even further, I mean, he's got some even some more disgusting things in here. Like, uh, I think there's one that was like an adult film. I can't remember which one it was, but it's just totally disgusting. And his most yeah, this one right here. Oh, yeah, itty bitty titty committee. Yep, lesbian. No, but that's film. yeah. But that's his past, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he yeah, supposedly got saved when he was very young. So yeah, that's one of the things that these Anderson supporters will do. They'll say, "Well, why bring up Paul's past? He's changed. He di he's different now. He's still working for Hollywood as of this year." So that's nonsense. And it's interesting. Right. You look at the list of his films. Babylon USA is not on it. And What's interesting too is Stephen Harrison actually has an IMBD right here. See right here, known for marching to Zion, birth control, AIDS. You see his little picture right there on IMB on IMDb. I said it wrong, but yeah, because I don't really care about that stuff. But there you go. Here's a list of his stuff: Israel moments, you know, Book of Revelation, post trib moments. Um, Marching to Zion, Word of Truth, Baptist Church, you know, Faithful Word, Baptist Church. I mean, why is he on this website? You know, why are all, are all these things on here? Why does he need to be on a website like this about movies? You know, it just sounds to me like he's got some very wicked connections um, to, to have all this stuff on, on this website like, like this. And uh, this is a bunch of uh, this whole AIDS thing and saying basically that, that sodomites, uh, you know, all should die. And, you know, basically trying to promote the old law and them to death and giving them diseases and stuff like that. I mean, the guy is just so full of pride. It's ridiculous. Obviously. Yep. You know what IMDB stands for? I do not. I am the devil's brethren. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. I would agree with that. <laughs> so, but as you can see clearly, the um, the chief, you know, the chief error of this movie is most recent. Uh, Thing is that Duel of Legends 2018. So he's still, you know, involved with Hollywood, and he's supposedly saved. Yeah, you know, that's that's the kind of yeah. Look at this. Yep. Go ahead and show that. You know, and you know, he's been involved with Stephen Harrison for a while. And you see right here, there's like this other stuff here. You know, the sighting. I don't know what that's about. You know, uh, Hell's Kitchen. He was involved with that. You know, 2012 to 2014 with Foul Mouth Ramsey. You know, guy curses like a sailor. Um, but I mean, why is he involved with stuff like this if he's a save if he's a save man? Oh, that's right. You know, it's okay to be a devil and still be saved this day and time. 
Well, that's right, because you know they preach no. They also preach no repentance to salvation, so they can pretty much do whatever they want, and you know, not have to answer for it. There's no conviction of sin with these yep. people. No, at all. They have no moral yep. standards. So, anyway. But beginning with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, play the uh, the film Babylon USA. Now, of course, we're not going to play the whole thing because it is an hour and 40 minutes and it's quite a long film. And a lot of it's just basically nonsense. But we do have a, quite a few spots where Anderson clearly lies about Revelation, Revelation 17, Mystery Babylon. And we're going to go ahead and hit on those spots. But go ahead and play it from the beginning, Jeremy. And I just want to point out and show the brethren that the very beginning of this movie, he literally is implementing mind control. And one of the things about mind control is re repeated phrases over and over again. I mean, you see that all the time with people that listen to the same uh, rock song over and over again. They just repeat it, repeat it. And that's mm -hmm. a part of mind control. And you're going to see at the beginning of this movie, the phrase New World Order gets repeated so many times, you basically lose count. Can you hear that okay? Yep. All right. You all look great. The end of the Republic has never looked better. Folks, there is a new world order that's being created. We need a new global financial order. I urge the international community to embrace its responsibility for creating that new world order. A new world order based upon collective action. When our founders declared a new order of the ages, they were acting on an ancient hope that is meant to be fulfilled. There is a chance for the President of the United States to use this disaster to carry out what his father, a phrase his father used, I think only once and hasn't been used since, and that is a new world. <coughs> think about this time in American foreign policy. Are we at a special moment where it is being redefined in a new world order? We're seeing a new world order now being built, a post-World War II world order. And I don't think America can retreat from that. I think we have to balance and adapt and adjust uh, to the realities and the currents of this new world order. We meet here at a moment of testing for Europe and the United States and for the international order that we have worked for generations to build. You're about to graduate into a complex and borderless world. So I think that everything that we've lived and learned tells us that we will never come out on top if we accept advice from soundbite salesmen and carnival barkers who pretend the most powerful country on earth can remain great by looking inward and hiding behind walls at a time that technology is made possible to do and unwise to even attempt. Because this university... Okay, I want to point something out right here. Y'all notice the dramatic music going on in the background? You know, the mind control? Absolutely, that's a, that's a part of the mind control is the ominous uh, music in the background. Yeah. Yeah, so get you all scared and stuff like that. Get the flesh going. That's pr pretty much what it's all about. And I noticed a lot of false prophets will put that in their like real dramatic videos and stuff. And they're just trying to get you going by emotion, you know. So I just wanted to point that out. Absolutely. And so are you. It's graduates now. I believe we in particular you your class has an incredible window of opportunity to lead in shaping a new world order for the 21st century. The 
what is the new world order? Well, when we talk about the new world order, what we're, we're talking about is a one world, a one world religion and a one world financial system. Now, the reason why people refer to this as the new world order, if you think about it. The current world order, meaning the way things are in the world right now, is that we have separate nations, don't we? We have about 200 separate nations that are sovereign. They have power over their own affairs. They're not all united under one government. And when we think about the current religious state, we have a multitude of religions in this world. We have Christianity and all of its various facets and denominations. But we also have religions like Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism. And these religions are definitely not united. They're separate religions. That's the current order of things. Not only that, but we have different financial systems. Here we use the dollar. If we went to Mexico, we're using pesos. If we go to Canada, we're going to be on a different dollar, a Canadian dollar. All over the world, there are all these different currencies. So when we talk about the new world order, we're talking about a world in which there's one government, where there's one religion and one financial system. What does New World Order mean, and what does it mean for the future? It means uh, new responsibilities uh, to keep the peace. Of the many reasons given for going to war in the Persian Gulf, one rings out for its soaring, if vague, ideals. Mr. Speaker of the United States! President Bush calls it the New World Order. What is at stake? is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind. With few exceptions, the world now stands as one. The world can therefore seize this opportunity to fulfill the long-held promise of a new world order we can find meaning and reward by serving some higher purpose than ourselves. A shining purpose. The illumination about. Yeah, go ahead. Real quick comment. Notice the uh, sad video of the little Arabic girl, you know, and she's crying. She's been traumatized. Propaganda, total propaganda. I mean, it is going on over there. It's terrible, whatever. But it's meant to tug at the heartstrings. It's meant to think, oh, look at the horrible stuff. What about the Christians that were tortured? You know, what about that? What about the martyrs yeah. of Jesus Christ? There's no mention of that. And it's funny because he shows all these American rulers that are saying about a new world order. What about when the Pope, for years and years, the Pope has been coming out saying we should bring in a new world order, a new world order and stuff? It doesn't show that. Yeah. Amen. What about the world council of churches, you know, where all the like church leaders go and bow down before the Pope, you know? Yep. Yeah. Funny. They missed that one. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of like the, this whole thing of, you know, go after America, look at all the evil America's done. Well, who controls America? They never ask that question. Mystery Babylon reigns over the Kings of the earth. Does America reign over the Kings of the earth? I don't think so. No. Yeah. no oh, but you know, according to them, it's the Jews and the Rothschilds and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll say, yeah, when I watched the, the beginning of this, how we seen how this film says new world order, like multiple times, just repeatedly. I mean, when I, when I see it, it, I think it just really starts off with the assumption that it wants to make you think that, America is Babylon because it just shows like this here in the beginning and uh, a few other times uh, throughout the film it just shows how how wicked America <laughs> is and I think to me it's like a lot of his um, examples or, or arguments for America being Babylon are just like uh, in a sense worldly because in a sense he's just using like examples in the world to show how America is so wicked 
And so it must be Babylon. And while ignoring everything, you know, Rome has done. Mm -hmm. Yep. Amen. Yep. We're going to get to that here in a little bit, because I, I guarantee you he's going to talk about the wickedness of America and stuff like that. And, you know, Brian and I talked about this the other day, how there are countries that have worse morals than America does. So, you know, we'll we'll talk about that as we go along here. Yep. Yep. All right. Continue. Points of light. President Bush's new world order is very much an evolving idea. He may be keeping it vague deliberately. In any case, it is easier to invoke than it is to explain or to implement. Obviously, they are talking about globalization. They are talking about the merging and of continents under an economic system, under a military system, and a governmental system. All of which, of course, the elite would control for their own purposes. The president first spoke of a new world order amid the collapse of communism in Eastern Europe, the revolutions of 1989. But critics observe it is more than just the absence of the Cold War. It is building new institutions to manage crisis and change. If you look at the speech that George Bush made in context, where he talks about a new world order, he's referring to a world where the United States is the one superpower. You see, there used to be two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union. But when the Soviet Union fell, you're left with one superpower in the world, the United States. And when the global elites, W. Bush or Bill Clinton, use the term New World Order, that's what they're referring to. That's what they mean by it. Okay, again, what about the Pope? You know? <laughs> It's a straw man argument to say, oh, America's this great superpower. Yeah, mm -hmm. Hey, buddy, are you forgetting about China? You know, who's probably got one of the largest armies in the world? Exactly. And Russia. You know? I saw a thing a while back on Russia. They were rolling out their whole new Navy. I mean, mm -hmm. they, have, they, have, they had a submarine. It was nine stories high inside the thing. A nuclear right. submarine. You know, it's, it's the biggest thing in the world. You it's know? funny too. Uh, China, both China and Russia, just released their new fifth generation uh, stealth fighter. You mm -hmm. know, so and America's having a hard time even rolling one out because of the expenses. So, give me a break. Who's got more firepower, us or them? Yeah. So. And you know, and and the thing is, you know, we're we're in Afghanistan and Iraq, and we can't even beat a bunch of disorganized, you know, terrorists, but we're going to beat Russia and China. Sure. Couldn't even beat Vietnam. You know? Yeah. yeah. We barely held on to Korea. So, you know. So, yeah. All right. Continue. In the wake of the Cold War, in a world where we are the only remaining superpower, it is the role of the United States. Moral and material resources to promote a democracy, it is our responsibility. It is our opportunity to lead. What? There's no one else. Today, America is the undisputed superpower. We have climbed a high mountain over these last 200 years to attain that responsibility. World's only superpower. There okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, just more propaganda right there. I mean, you know, using the space thing, which was a hoax, by the way, you know, do your research on that thing. The whole space trip to moon, the moon was a bunch of junk. Was It never happened. Amen. You know, those, they'll sit there and say that kind of, they'll use that kind of stuff right there and say, oh, see, America's went to great heights, you see. And, you know, while Richard Nixon calls, uh, you know, uh, Neil Armstrong from L.A. in a, you know, movie theater so <laughs> a recording studio yeah you don't tell me their phones reach to the moon give me a break i can barely get cell phone signal you know in certain areas here right now in 2018 yeah you don't tell me a phone can reach to the moon come on you know just more propaganda just wanted to bring that up well, i'd say probably just skip ahead a little bit what'd you say brother tim somewhere around 13 minutes in yeah yeah 13 minutes 20 uh, 26 seconds go ahead and Get on over to, uh, to that timestamp. Okay.
All right, I'll just play it from right here. Already seeing it today, even before this happens, where religions are starting to merge in a sense and talk about putting aside their differences. If you jump in, you'll see the one world financial system. Look at Revelation 13. Okay. Okay. So I need to stop it right there because he's talking about religions merging. Now, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that the whole world worships the Antichrist, a man, a man sitting on uh, the uh, in the temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Religions can't get uh, get along nowadays. They're just too different. When you bring people that have differences like that together, like religions, they're not going to get along. Look at the already basically crusade we have going on right now against Islam. You're going to sit there and try to tell me that Islam and all these other religions are all of a sudden going to strike peace and they're all going to come together. I don't believe it's going to happen. I actually 100% agree with uh, Brother Brian's teaching that uh, the end time religion is radical Roman Catholicism revived because Catholics are the only actual religion that actually do worship a man. Whether they want to admit it or not, they worship the Pope, the Pope that sits on that throne that has, you know, just sits there kind of decrepit like eh, they worship that guy. They think he's Jesus Christ on earth. And that's part of the teaching of Ami millennialism. And they're all Ami millennial. So this whole idea that religions are going to come together and like liquidate all their uh, differences, it's not, it's not true at all. It's definitely not biblical. Yeah, amen. I think that uh, the whole thing of the teaching that the uh, new age, new world order, I think is a Vatican distraction, actually. Yep. I've been thinking mm -hmm. about that lately. They're blaming the new agers for everybody coming together. That's not what the Bible says. You know, it's just not there. And right. all these prophecy teachers, you know, over the years, they'll talk about the new age movement. And yet you say, what about the Jesuits? And they'll just keep their mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. So, um, so if, is there anything else in this section you wanted to talk about or should we skip ahead a little bit? Go, um, go over to about, uh, go up to about 16 minutes, 51 seconds. Okay. Well, okay. Oh, come on, quit that. Si 1630 is fine. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. It keeps, I don't know why it's doing that. It's like locked on the thing. It's all right. There we go. Weird. Night. So when you understand that the Tower of Babel was the entire world united under a one world government, and a one world religion, you really begin to see the spirit of Babylon as it goes through different empires in world history. Forward to the city of Babylon. In Daniel chapter 2, the king had a dream and he forgot the dream. And he called his wife, oh, tell me what this means. Uh, and they said, oh, that's what you dream. And he said, I forgot the dream. Tell me what I dreamed and what it means. And pa they said, oh, king, pause it, Jeremy. Nobody did that. So I'm gonna okay. Okay, so yeah, around 16 minutes, 51 seconds. You hear them completely mention and add to scripture the spirit of Babylon. There is no such thing one time in the Bible. You look up uh, the spirit of Babylon, it occurs zero times. This is not a spiritual thing. It's a Babylon, a Babylon, an empire. It has nothing to do with like some sort of spirit. The only spirit that's actually mentioned in the Bible that goes to people is the spirit of Antichrist, not this spirit of Babylon. So that's a bit, big thing I wanted to hit on because this is how they're spiritualizing the passages to make it look like Babylon could be anywhere. And this is where they really get um, are getting, you know, babes in Christ and people who are just flat out lost into serious heresy. Yep. Yeah, they say it later on in the film as well. So they do repeat it a couple times. This yeah. spirit of Babylon. All right. Continue. All of you. Wait, is there another point y'all want to go to? No, uh, that's it for now. The um, let me see here. I have I have twenty one minutes and fifty seconds in. There's something interesting. Yeah, okay. go ahead, go ahead and go do ahead. a Brian's timestamp, then we'll do the one right after that that I have. Right. right where the Greeks left off with world empire with global conquests. 
obviously the Roman Empire. That was that iron empire that broke in pieces and so forth. Jesus Christ came to this earth for the first time from an empire. At the time of Christ, Rome was the power. There was no threat to them. They were at that time. So basically, if we were to kind of oversimplify things in a sense, though, you know, basically the Persians defeat the Babylonians, the Greeks defeat the Persians, the Romans defeat the Greeks. That's correct. And that's the succession of kind of four great empires. That is the four greatest empires of the world's ever known. Right there. Um, well, you can continue a little bit beyond that. I think I just did 2150. Okay. At the time, the geography changed multiple times. Said over the last two. All right. Okay. So he says what what Anderson's argument is here. He says that uh, the geography of Babylon changes multiple times. So then, why couldn't we believe it changed from, you know. Rome and Roman Catholicism to America today um, Because the Bible doesn't say that the Bible doesn't say that the fifth kingdom is going to be part iron part my miry clay the ten toes and it's going to morph as time goes by The Bible doesn't teach that you know, so again Anderson is adding to the scriptures here Yeah, yep. and, uh, and that's the exact same notes that I had so yeah, that was, that was the same spot I was about to say to go to Yep. Bible actually never speaks of a great Western power either. So. And now I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you should be able. I think once you start playing it from here, it should, he should go right into uh, King, uh, the Nebuchadnezzar uh, statue. And um, I got a couple of things I'll, I'll uh, say about that as well. All right. A thousand years. It could have changed also. I think that a lot of Christians, when they think about, uh, Babylon the Great, and I think about you know the, the old Roman Empire. In their minds, that's where that's where it stops. They don't think about the spirit of Babylon being <laughs> alive and well today. Oh boy, spirit of Babylon! Yeah, they they, they repeat it multiple times. It's ridiculous. Or spirit of Babylon, and the Bible says, um, chapter and verse, please. I mean, that's ridiculous. That the whore sitteth upon many waters. Then later in chapter 17, he says, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So, this spirit of Babylon is not restricted to one geographic location, but the whore sits upon many waters it was centralized in babylon but then it's moved so if you were living in the days of <laughs> esther or days of ezra and nehemiah you would see the center of globalist power not as being babylon but as being in shushan or as modern scholars call it susa obviously rome is a completely different geographic location than babylon but it's part of the same system the same spirit the same idea of babylon is continued on now let's ask ourselves this you know i want to say something about that so is he a charismatic now everything's got a spirit to it now yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah and it's funny because he you know uh, we're it's, we're going to be getting to it here in a second but one of the biggest things that, that's 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 laughable is that again no scripture for the spirit of babylon this whole idea of these kingdoms is represented in Daniel. That's why we know what the kingdoms are is because of that statue. It has nothing to do with a spirit moving here, spirit moving there. Like we're told what these kingdoms are in relation to Babylon and Daniel. All right. Question. Is Rome, Italy today ruling over the world? Yes. Is that really the seat of governance in this world? I yes. don't think that the global government Rome, Italy. Now, there are people out there who think the Catholic Church is running the world. They you are. Know, and the Jesuits, and it's a big conspiracy. I personally don't believe that. I don't believe that they have the power that they used to have. They used to have that kind of power, didn't they? I mean, back... Okay, then, Princess, show us some proof. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is perfect, because this is exactly where I was going to have you stop. You know, he gives... If you, if you watch, 
watch this this film after this scene he gives no directly no evidence at all to even try to debunk the uh the fact that the jesuits are running the world he gives zero evidence he literally tiptoes around this whole thing i mean watch as we uh, as we continue it, it's ridiculous yeah it's funny too because like uh, you know people don't realize that there is a the black pope is the one that's running everything it, it, people, there's a white pope and a black pope is what i've learned when it comes to jesuits you have the white pope is the front man which is the one which is pope francis and this is behind the scenes bowing down to satan okay and taking orders from satan and running the world that's who they all run that's who they all uh worship basically so mm -hmm. And it's funny, too, because America is supposed to be Babylon, according to Anderson, and yet he just conveniently leaves out the fact that our president is a Jesuit. I was just, that's actually the next part we're about to skip to. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's funny, too, is the white pope is also a Jesuit. Yeah. Yeah. And Trump has been putting Jesuit after Jesuit into governmental positions. But, you know, it's just, it's... The guy's so retarded. I mean, you know, if America is Babylon, then the rulers are Jesuits, but the Jesuits don't have power. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. Yeah, and I, and I think it's worth mentioning uh, the Vatican II or uh, the the Second Vatican Council. I mean, if he says like he doesn't think Rome has that kind of power today, I mean, if you look at the that Vatican II Council, it's like, you know. That's basically where you know Rome basically like changed their their tactics. They got that's where the whole you know ecumenical thing really started, like religions merging, like you showed earlier in the film. I mean, uh, they weren't you know always like that before. You know, they, you see all this you know Catholics, you know, you know they're calling Protestants you know separated brethren now and and all this. And so, I mean, that's maybe that's you know part of the reason why he thinks they lost that power or why some people think that um but yeah if you if you look at that i mean that's it's not always going to be going to be like that because when the uh antichrist you know does come into power i mean it's going to be you know the pope there and no the vatican ii you know it's not going to be an effect there so i think it'll, it'll go back to the way it was before you know like in the dark ages absolutely yep because like you know also if you look at you know um the uh like world war ii like you know i know hitler you know he signed that concordat with uh what pope Pius the 12th there and like you know not many people know that i mean people may, may think you know germany had a lot of power uh, you know during world war ii but yeah they were under control of rome the whole time mm -hmm. right so exactly All right, continue. We, we, hold on a second. Got a couple of trolls in the comment thing. Can you uh, delegate some things to somebody to just block these idiots? Yeah. Well, please yeah, do. no problem. Well, I hate to tell you, Obama's not the Antichrist. <laughs> 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 okay, and uh, yeah, real quickly, Sean Trey just said, I wish I could block them. Sean Trey, I'm going to go ahead and make you a moderator for the comment section. So if you see any kind of um, trolls or spam, you have the power to block them. Awesome. Sounds good to me. Right. Getting tired of seeing that little witch's comments there. <laughs> You're welcome, Sean Trey. <laughs> if you if you need to know how to block somebody, you just uh, go over by their name in the comment section to the little dots, and then click on that, and it should let you um, uh, hide user on this channel, and that'll let you block them. All right, y'all ready to continue? Yeah, and actually, uh, go, go. We're gonna go ahead and jump into uh, forty two minutes. Okay. Is there anything in between, Brian? That you have? Um. Oh, let me see here. Uh, yeah, go to um, uh, 24 minutes in. Okay, well, I'm right there, so. Yeah. In the Middle Ages, I mean, they would put the crown on somebody's head. 
And in fact, it was a great turning point in human history when Napoleon actually took the crown out of the Pope's hand. When the Pope came to crown him, he took it out of his hand okay. and put it on his own head. All right. Okay. Uh, pause it there for a minute. Uh, we kind of cut into the middle of it, but basically Anderson talks about um, the Jesuits. And he says about how that in the Middle Ages they controlled kings and whatever else. Uh, hello, the Jesuits weren't formed until 1540. That's not the Middle Ages, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's really studied the issue there, you know, real qualified to talk. And Napoleon was totally controlled by the Vatican and the Jesuit order. Uh, you can watch that. I, I had actually posted it on Patreon. I don't know where it is now, but um, the one video about the, the Jesuit order and things. Napoleon was just a pawn in the hands of the Vatican, you know, so whatever. But, yeah, he uh, was. Um, we don't have to go there, but uh, 27 minutes in, he's talking about the war on Islam and things. And, you know, it's a Roman Catholic crusade. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're, he's demonizing America as this doing this horrible war on Islam. But if you study church history, you know that the war on Islam is a Catholic crusade. They've been doing it for centuries. So, again, who really controls America? It's the Catholic Church that controls America, and they're using the American military to go out and fight their crusades for them. Yep. Amen. Oh, oh, but you see, brother, it's the Zionist Jews. They're the true evil. That's right. I forgot. I keep forgetting that. <laughs> you know, but they but they kneel down and and they're knighted by Catholics. But you know, it's all it's all part of the charade, right? Yeah. That's that's how clever the deception is. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they make you think that the Catholic Church is you know knighting them, you know it, and all these things. In reality, they're the ones that are really in control. Yeah, sure. You know, it's funny. The Catholic Church has all these different orders. You know, I mean. Why is that? It's just, it's just funny. So, all right. Yeah. Where are we going from here? 40 minutes then. Okay. 40 minutes. 30. No, we're right there. 39, 31. That's good. Some reason when I want to, I have to just put it somewhere close. I just can't just drop it where I want it. Beat these people and and show them a better way of life. But this is what the the Greeks said. This is what Alexander the Great said. This is what the Romans said. This is the mentality of world empire on the back of a postage stamp. What's an empire? An empire is a group of nations or peoples all being ruled under one government. Would you consider the United States an empire then? Certainly. Certainly. I mean, that's the basic point. I do. Uh, and, and I think a lot of historians do. We truly are behaving as a global empire. It's probably the only real empire. By any <laughs> definition of the word, the United States is an empire today. <laughs> okay. It's huge. It dominates the world. It has its war. Dominates the world, but yet we lost wars. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was the point I was trying to get to. You know, they said it at one point, I don't know if we missed that section, but they said about America is all powerful and unchallenged. Uh, okay. You know, yeah, I think America is, is in many ways, it's not an empire. It's just a big, you know, powerful military that's been used to do some real corrupt things. But we are, we're not unchallenged. That's ridiculous. <laughs> way nobody is able to challenge it whatever it says is good for the world that's what the world will do that's not to say that everything it does in the world is bad but it is to say that it can do whatever it chooses good or bad and no one dares say it's bad all of the elements of empire are present in the united states today can there be any doubt that the united states is the most powerful nation in the world I don't think so. You go around the world, they, everybody seems to know it. Because English is the that's global it. language. That is. That's right. I mean, if the world were to ever speak one language, it would be... Look at this guy over here. This old this old fart right here. He's just a proud look, you know, looking up like that. You know, yeah. The Bible doesn't teach that's an abomination, does it? <laughs> I just had to point that out. Uh, I thought I kinda, that was funny. I kind of thought it looked like he was having a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> he was having a proud stroke. You know, he was proud of his stroke. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. All right. Continue. English. That's right. That's pretty clear. That's right. Yes. That's yeah. huge. Yes. Wow. America is, I think, the most powerful nation in the world. There really is no globalization without the United States. There is no United Nations without the United States. And everything that that smacks of world power, politics, economy, military, it all depends on the force of the United States of America. The United States has all of those elements of empire, and including one that many people don't even think about. And that element is that all empires come to an end. They usually come to an end rather viciously. They fall apart. They're destroyed. And that element, too, is present in the United States. <laughs> There's that one guy on there. He looked, I almost thought he was a priest there for a second. He uh, he had like the black on and like the white, almost like a white collar there for a second. I, I almost thought he was a priest. Yeah. You know, got to make a point there on what G. Edward Griffin said about how that America is going to come to an end and a violent end. Uh, that's not true. If it's, uh, if America's mystery Babylon, it's God that's going to put it to an end, you know? So, to say, well, we can see America as an empire. America as an empire is going to fall. Oh, that's not Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon is finished by God supernaturally. Yep. Not because of the empire crumbling because of economic things and whatever. Just stupid. Oh. Mm hmm. Yeah. It it's a key with a lock. It's in the it's in the box. It should say back gate lock key. Okay, you can continue the video. Um I'm kind of busy right now. I can't really go there at the moment. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that you Raise up a man for such a time as this. Right now, What's going your on? choice is this choice. <laughs> we believe Pause it, Jeremy. Yep. Okay, so I just want to say a couple of things. You see, now we're getting into the the Donald Trump thing, and this whole documentary, he does not. I mean, go, but it'll be a little bit later. Is even, is even worthy to be called Maybe. a documentary, but he does not mention once throughout this whole thing yeah. Trump's Jesuit education. I mean, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. And he features uh, Bill Clinton. I forget which clip that was. I think we might have passed it already. But he also features Bill Clinton. And yet he doesn't even go into how Trump is Jesuit educated and so is Bill Clinton. And he also doesn't hit on the fact that it's, it's one of the uh, Jesuit statements that their biggest form of control is through the education system. That's why they have so many schools all throughout the United States and other other countries as well. But not a, not a piece of that information is given to anybody in this uh, propaganda film. Mm -hmm. And I, I had my, my video about uh, Ken Hoven, the, the whole thing of two Jesuit priests, pretty high ranking, full fledged, you know, Society of Jesus priests. And they literally said, if you have gone to a Jesuit school, if you've attended a retreat, um, anything like that, you are considered part of the Jesuit family. Mm -hmm. So it, it is perfectly right to call Donald Trump a Jesuit. Um, by the Jesuit order's own admission, if you've been to a Jesuit school, you are part of the Jesuit family. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I'm sorry about that. I had a call from work. That's all right. All right. You ready to continue? Yep. Yep. All right. Break down. Break down. 
breaking tonight, two weeks into a Donald Trump presidency, and we are already seeing signs of a new world order. This is a new world order that Trump has put in place because he's an advocate. It's not, it's not just liberals in the U.S. It's not just liberals in the U.S. With Trump, I think you see the, the possibility, uh, really for the first time ever, of a new world order that involves an even closer than before merger corporation and the state. The presidents in America are not elected. They are chosen beforehand. That's a bold statement. That's a bold statement. And they know already in America who's going to win this one. They know whether it's Bush or Gore. Both men, by the way, are world government people. But my oh, guess it. is Bush. All right. I'm trying to pause it. There you go. Uh, notice their little propaganda thing here, okay? They're saying, they're playing a video clip with this guy saying the thing about between Bush and Gore. It's really weird why they would use this. They say, this this guy, the older man that was talking right before these clips of Trump and Hillary, and they're talking about the American presidency being controlled, and he's talking about Bush and Gore, and then he shows Trump and Hillary. It's really weird why they would do that. I don't quite understand what the point of that was. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, it is an interesting spot. But the, uh, let me see here. The the next part of my notes is the timestamp, fi about 52 minutes, 56 seconds. Is there anything you got, uh, Brian, before then or no? Nope. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Jeremy, and uh, jump up to about uh, 15, uh, 52 minutes, I guess, 50 seconds. Okay. No, 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 it's too far. <laughs> Washington. All right. Let me go back a little bit. I don't know why this thing does that. Oh, wonderful. Oh, good old Tex Mars. All right. Or Satan. See a wonderful day for nation and Masons of the United States of America are most privileged and happy to be able to participate in this momentous event. We are beginning our day as we do in Freemasonry uh, with the thought of God. In order to be a Freemason, one must not belong to a particular religion, but he must believe in a supreme being in some form. Senator Thurman, what? members of Congress, most worshipful Grand Masters, other Masons, and my fellow Americans. Today is a most sacred and special occasion for all of us. 200 years ago, beneath this hallowed sanctuary, the capital cornerstone by President and then Grand Master of Freemasons, George Washington. The inauguration of George Washington had taken place on April 30th of that year on the Bible, which is here this morning through the courtesy of St. John's Lodge number one. The same Bible upon which Presidents Clinton, Bush, Carter, and George Washington were inaugurated president. The story of how uh, Washington, D.C. came to be is very interesting. Washington, D.C. was originally farmland. This was chosen, of course, by Jefferson and Washington and others to be the site of the new capital of the United States. But Thomas Jefferson... Uh, knew okay. All right, so basically what we have right here in this uh, part of the, the movie is just a huge deflection into Freemasonry. Almost every single Jesuit coadjutor that I've, I've seen basically will deflect everything to focusing only on Freemasonry and all the occult junk that's involved with it. They won't touch the Jesuits. They won't touch any of that. And considering that the Jesuits have 10 times more power and influence over Freemasons than you know Freemasonry. And uh, that's that's just a common thing I see with many uh, you know people that are like coadjutors. They they don't touch 
barely the Jesuits at all, and they put all the focus on Freemason uh, occult junk, basically. And that's why I wanted to point out, because you won't hear anything about the Jesuits in this, but by golly, you'll hear every piece of masonry throughout the, the rest of this um, film in this scene. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know as a fact that, that only America has Freemasons. Yeah. Nobody else has Freemasons. You know, <laughs> uh, you know it's just, it's so absurd. You know, and, and like you were saying, Brother Tim, I mean, the thing of the Jesuits and the Freemasons, Alberto Rivera came out and said that, you know, he talked about the fact that the Freemasonic free movement is controlled by the Jesuits. Mm -hmm. so, you know, but they don't bring that up. Nope, not one time. So um, where are we at in the, in the film thing? I'm at 54 minutes and 24 seconds. Okay. Um, another interesting thing in that time there, he gets into the thing of the obelisk, the Washington monument there, and just makes a real quick brief reference to St. Peter's Basilica that there's an obelisk there as well, but then changes the subject really quickly. Uh, again, you know, if you want to talk about obelisks, it's a, it's a, you know, symbol of Baal worship, but it goes mm -hmm. to Roman Catholicism. Mm -hmm. Yep. So sure does. The next one I have is, is about an hour and eight minutes in. Okay. Yeah, I got about an hour, hour and seven. So yeah, just right around there. Yeah. All right, I'll start about an hour and six, some change. Well, what was Babylon like? Babylon was a place where people lived a very lavish, luxurious lifestyle. They had a lot of money. They had a lot of wealth. They had a lot of comfort. They were a great consumer of goods. They were also a global <laughs> empire. They had a great military. They had the greatest military in the world at that time. They had the largest empire in the world. And the nations that carried that torch thereafter, Persia, Greece, and Rome, they were the same way. They were the new Babylon. Pause it. And oh. today, the century, the nation that fits that description. All right. I was just going to, can you get it back to that statue real quick? Yep. Uh, let's see here. All right. Yeah, I go. Go ahead and kind of play it until he lists basically all those little Lord kingdom spots and then pause this as you can. And Rome. Okay. They were the same way. They were the new Babylon. Right, pause. Oops. <laughs> it's hard <laughs> to catch it. I know. That's all right. I just want to point out that throughout this whole documentary, he does not touch the feet. The feet, the iron mixing with the clay. He does not even uh, capitalize on that. And it's funny because if this whole movie right here this whole propaganda film is meant to <clears throat> make uh america mystery babylon and exempt rome from having any part of it why is the iron mixing with the mary clay at the end of the kingdoms why is that there we know the iron is rome so it's still mixing so it's still there i just have to point that that out because the biggest lie in this whole documentary in my opinion is that right there he does not touch those kingdoms uh, that that last kingdom mm-hmm yeah, that, that and the fact that um, he also comes out and uh, changes mountains. You're going to see it here in just a little bit. Yeah. He mountains to kingdoms. And he ends up saying there's seven mountains in Revelation 17. And he says seven kingdoms. Mm -hmm. The book of Daniel. Right. There's five. I mean, it just just as plain as day. There are five kingdoms and he changes it to seven. Yep. And that that's actually the that's actually an hour and eight minutes, so we can just keep on uh, okay. going through it. Oh, looks you, you got like some scriptures pulled up, Jeremy. Yeah, I was trying to find that real quick. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, here we go. It's on. It's right here, verse nine. And here is the mind which had wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. You know, so. I mean, again, I mean, you just read Revelation 17, tell who it is. I mean, it's obvious, you know, um, it's funny, too. I want to point this out as well in Revelation 17. Uh, I'm going to read it. And there came out of 
the seven angels which had the seven vials talk with me saying unto me come hither and i will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication now let me ask you something has the rest of the world been made drunk with the wine of america's fornication no, no. i mean come on you know um who what is the most powerful influence right now in the world it's Roman Catholicism. I mean, you're going to, you got you have so many people that hate us. You, if you've ever been to Europe, a lot of a lot of people in France they hate us, you know, and a lot of those a lot of those countries and stuff like they hate us. So how are they, you know, drunken with the wine of America? Give me a break, you know. <laughs> and uh, and also to add what you just said, the uh, the idea that our our culture is presented as if someone you know watches like a documentary or a movie about Christianity. Oftentimes what they're seeing is Roman Catholicism. Like that's all that's in anything from Hollywood regarding like movies or television. So if there's somebody actually trying to see what Christianity is, they're getting only Roman Catholicism. And that's really it. Yep. Yep. That's true. It's like every movie you see it, the, the person turns out to be a Catholic and they call them yep. a Christian. Yep. So, yeah. And it's funny too. If you look at most of the crosses and movies and stuff like that, they're crucifixes. They're not blank mm. crosses. Yeah. So, let me minimize yep. that real quick. All right. That carried that torch thereafter, Persia, Greece, and Rome. They were the same way. They were the new Babylon. See? There's the, uh, there's the statue right there. I just want to show that real quick. Yeah, and, and so, while, you have it, while you have it paused, I forgot to mention, he mentions all attributes. What about the purple and scarlet colors? Where in America do we have purple and scarlet colors? But over in Rome, I seem to recall the cardinals and the bi and the bishops' robes all purple and scarlet. Yep. In fact, I seem to recall the same Babylonian tradition of when a uh, cardinal gets ranked up, he uh, gets to kneel before the pope and gets a golden chain uh, wrapped around his neck, just like the old uh, uh, in the book of Daniel when Daniel ranked up and ascended to a higher position of authority. Yep. Amen. On. And today, in the 21st century, the nation that fits that description is the United States of America. We have all the attributes of Babylon. There should be no confusion or misunderstanding about Babylon because the mystery has already been revealed, as the Bible says in Revelation 17, <laughs> verse number 7. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven. Notice how they just completely skipped over the first four verses. You know. Mm-hmm. And they just completely just, you know, eliminate the fact that, you know, Rome is purple and scarlet, you know, you know, let's just eliminate that because that would disprove our stupid system. Mountains on which the woman sitteth. I went on Wikipedia and there was a list of about 80 or 90 cities that claim to be built on seven hills. People have said, well, Mecca is built on seven hills. Jerusalem is built on seven hills. But yet, even though a lot of cities claim to be built on seven hills. There's only one city that has been historically known as the city of seven hills, and that's Rome. So there's really no question about the connection between Rome and Babylon. But here's the thing. That is not the only interpretation of this verse. And, and in fact, I don't even think it's the primary interpretation, but it is there. <laughs> so I'm not saying that people who preach that are wrong. I think they were right. But I think that they're missing something even bigger. Often in the Bible, when it uses the term mountain, it's referring to a kingdom. So when the Bible says there are seven mountains on which the woman sits. Really? Please. Yeah, I was about to say, go ahead and pause it. <laughs> Often in the Bible, we see when it says mountain, it means actually kingdom. In my notes, I have, I have written right here, Anderson deflects with interpretation. <laughs> That's just one interpretation of the verse. There's this other interpretation and, you know, you see it's symbolic because when it says seven mountains, it actually doesn't mean seven mountains, even though you're told that the, you're actually told in Revelation what's symbolic and what's not. 
for this for this particular passage. I mean, um, you know, we're told the waters are many people's nations and tongues. It doesn't say anything about the mountains. It doesn't say that these mountains are kingdoms, like like he's about to try to say. That when it, if it says it's seven mountains, it's seven mountains. Yep. And I, I think it's funny too how he says, uh, you know, there are people that said it was Rome, and that certainly was true, you know, and, and, and they were right in that. Well, how can you be right at one point in time, but no longer right? Yeah. You know. And just like I said, he just completely skipped over the first part of the whole chapter, you know, and just, I mean, you just ignore the fact that, you know, the colors are purple and scarlet, you know, and mm -hmm. I didn't realize a city and a nation are the same thing. So, <laughs> all right, continue. It's referring to the great whore occupying seven different kingdoms or seven different empires. Then he says there are seven kings to go with those kingdoms. He says five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. Well, look at here. He says, you know what? If you want to make that argument that the mountains are kingdoms, okay, then you, you still fail that America is, uh, you know, Babylon because America is not in control of anything. I mean, give me a break. So to use that, you know, to say, well, it's somehow America or whatever, you still got a problem because, I mean, again, who's the ruler of the world, you know? It's definitely not America. America is not in control of any nations of any kind. So. That there are seven kings. Five are fallen. Now, what are the five that were fallen? That would be Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, and Greece. One is. That's the Roman Empire. He's living during the Roman Empire. And the other is not yet come. Well, the There's a future right. separate. Okay, can you go back to that thing where it shows the seven kingdoms? Yep. Right there. Okay. Now you see what he did there? He says there are there are seven kings, which it says in Revelation chapter 17, there are seven kings. And then he puts up a chart saying seven kingdoms. It doesn't say seven kingdoms. It doesn't. Yep. Yeah, he just changed the scriptures right in front of their faces, you know, and, and showing seven kingdoms. The Bible says in Daniel, it's five kingdoms. You know, it's insane. <laughs> All right, continue. Babylon, Persia, and Greece. One is. That's the Roman Empire. He's living during the Roman Empire. And the other is not yet come so there's a future seventh kingdom that is after the roman empire a seventh kingdom that's coming where the whore will operate and look what the bible says about the seventh kingdom and when he cometh he must continue a short space so is the seventh kingdom going to last as long as the first six did it's only going to last a very short time and look what the eighth is because the bible says the beast that was and is not, but watch this, and is of the seven. So what happens is the seventh kingdom is going to be an end times global <laughs> world empire. Pause it. Pause it. Yep. Right there. Right there. Iron mixed with clay. Iron. Rome. Mixed. He doesn't even touch it. He just points to it. And nobody who who's like watching it, it even dawns on them. That's what that's what gets me the most about this whole this whole thing. When I was when I first viewed this to uh, and started taking my notes, I just it blew my mind how nobody bothered to point to that and say, well, why is the iron still there? The iron's Rome. Why is it still there? If it's not there, according to Anderson, because he's a liar. He's a false prophet, false teacher, false prophet, whatever. He's he's false all the way. Yeah. And again, he calls it the seventh kingdom. You know, yep. it's the fifth yep. kingdom. There is no yep. seventh kingdom. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> well, um, you know what? I forgot what I was going to say now. Y'all 
I kind of stole it from you, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say. Well, it's because you know he's just. I mean, he's not even. He's not even a Christian. I mean, let's just be honest here. I mean, the stuff that he does, the stuff that he pulls, and the connection he has with you know Hollywood and you know all these guys. I mean, the Universal One Church. I mean, the list goes on. I mean, he's he's in with some pretty wicked people, you know, and. I mean, it's pretty obvious his connections to Rome, you know, he's got to stand up for his mother church, you know, and say, well, she can't be the, she can't be the Antichrist kingdom. We can't be Babylon, you know, anyway. All right. We don't want to go from here. What are we at? Uh, I'm at one ten ten. Okay. I have at one fifteen that I, I like to call him Jiminy Cricket. Uh, yeah. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> He, he comes out and he says he calls Babylon a nation about uh, one minute. Well, it goes about maybe one hour and 18 minutes in, but you can start at one hour and 15 minutes. And then he okay. called it a city after that. Oh, so, you know, he starts out calling Babylon a nation. Then he says, oh, it's a city. You know, Babylon in Revelation 17 and 18 is never called a nation. It's called a no. city. Yep. No. Sorry. All right in power without the military might of the United States. How can the Antichrist get in power without our technology, without our infrastructure of world government that's already set up? But then once he's done with it, then God wants to destroy and punish the United States. So he uses the 10 kings. He uses the Antichrist to destroy the United States. Revelation 18 and verse 1 says this, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So here we see the destruction of Babylon. He says, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Notice verse three. For all nations have drunk of the wine. I want to say this. A lot of these people that believe Babylon USA, they'll try to say the hateful bird is an eagle. You know, that's one dumb argument I've heard on that whole thing. So I just wanted to point that out. Wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of and i heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not her plagues for her sins have reached unto heaven and god hath remembered her iniquities reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according According to her works in the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. So notice again the parallel with the United States, this attitude of we're so powerful, nothing bad could ever happen to us. We have the most powerful military in the world. We can never be judged. We can never be defeated. This attitude that just belligerently spits in the face of God and expects nothing to happen. I mean, we think that we can just murder 3,000 babies a day and that God's just going to kind of look the other way as we. Okay. He's using a straw man argument at this point, you know, again, I mean, that's what a lot of false prophets do. I mean, they use straw man arguments and say, look at all the murders and the abortions in, in here and the transgenderism. You know what? You know, getting back to what we were talking about earlier, uh, Brian and I were talking about this the other day. There is countries in Europe that actually have open nude parks in Europe. I don't know of that being anywhere in America that I know of, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, they have open, you know, just weird stuff, like things that you wouldn't even think of over there that we don't even have over here that, you know, Americans would probably frown upon, to be honest with you. Some of the un, just the disgusting things that go on over there in some countries, you know. So it's just, it's just, it's just dumb. 
And to say, oh, we we think that we can never be beat, we can never be, you know, and all this stuff. And give me a break. You know, I, I talk to people on a daily basis. They're always worried about China and North Korea and stuff like that. So to hit, sit here and say the Americans have an attitude, no, you're delusional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about the thing of you want to talk about children and things? How about children being molested into the millions by the Vatican and nothing ever happens to them? Yeah. You no. Know? So. Yeah. I mean, if you understand the military, you know, and stuff like that, you can understand that, yeah, we might have some sort of power in military, but I'm going to tell you something. It's nothing compared to uh, China and Russia, you know, uh, just to be honest. It's really not. We're, we're behind them in a lot of ways. So, I mean, I've, you know, I, back in the day when I was, you know, lost, I was trying to go out for the Air Force and I was a big military guy. You know, I wanted to be an Air Force pilot and stuff like that. And uh, thankfully, it never worked out. You know, I probably would have been brainwashed, but, um, you know, I knew all about our military and like what kind of things we had. And, and I knew that we were, we were, you know, nowhere near to what Russia had back then. You know, that was 10 years ago. And I knew that their, you know, their air force was way better than ours. And, uh, and I was like, man, I'm scared if I ever come in contact with Russian pilots, you know, especially me, it's, especially the irony of me being, you know, front uh, ancestry being Russian too, you know, that would, that would have been bad, but you know, but still, so I wanted to make that point. Yeah. I actually knew I used to be in ministry with a brother, Jesse Delusky. He was a uh, Marine Sergeant and, um, and he told me that he knew a guy that was in the army and he said that they literally stopped doing uh, jumping jacks, you know, because too many soldiers were throwing their shoulders out, you know, <laughs> wow. Um, Oh boy, that's, that's a strong army. You know, we can't even do jumping jacks, you know, that's just, yeah. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. <laughs> All right. You want to go somewhere from here? Or you keep going. Uh, keep going. We're just about at the point of one eighteen there okay. where Jiminy cricket says about America, the Babylon's a nation. Then he goes on to say it's a city. Okay. Contradicting himself all this innocent blood well, we think that we can go out and and bomb all, all these other countries drone attack on men women and children and that somehow that's all just going to be forgotten of the lord but let me tell you something there is going to be a consequence first of all the bible teaches that there is a physical destruction that is going to come upon our nation the united states of america even in this lifetime it could happen and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. So I want you to understand the description that's being given here. We're being told of a nation that's destroyed in one day. And we're told of the fact that people will be able to see the smoke of her burning. Verse 10, standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. So people are looking at this city and saying, she you know, go ahead, bro. He just said nation. A few seconds earlier, he says that we see the destruction of the nation. Then he reads the scriptures and it says the city. You know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny too because you know it says it's burned in one hour. Okay, how is a whole nation burned in one hour look, you know, like that uh, quickly? I don't think so. You know, even if you were to drop nuclear bombs, it would take time. It would take, you know, it would take some time. You know, it wouldn't take an hour. It's ridiculous. Yep. Yeah, really. All right. Where are we going from here? Um, an hour and 21 minutes. Anderson says at that point that uh, no man buyeth our merchandise. That's not what the Bible says. It says their merchandise. Right. All right. All right. So you can see how this would ruin that industry for the shipping companies. I mean, just here in Long Beach, California, at this one port, look at all the merchandise that's coming in. You can see how the Bible says every shipmaster, all that trade by the sea. You can see why he uses that kind of language, because 
we are the great importer. I mean, all this made in China stuff, just train boxcar upon boxcar, just ships full of it. I mean, look out the window. Look at all this stuff. And this is just a fraction of what comes into this country on a daily basis, let alone other ports and other harbors of the United States just bringing in. OK, what does that have to do with anything? You know, it's it's weird that he says, oh, we're getting all this stuff from China and stuff like that. But it's funny. They're the ones over there making everything. They're the ones that have all the jobs and all the financial uh, you know, industry and stuff. And where is it at here in America? It's hard to find a job nowadays here anymore you know yeah it's working like, a, like a good factory job yeah the, those are like all practically gone days a week now you know i'm struggling and where, where are these where are these jobs at if we're such a powerful country i mean give me a break we're being we're being basically shaping into a third world country that's where it's headed they are destroying the infrastructure from the inside so let's continue yeah. And just want to oh, say real quick, sorry. Country. Yeah, uh, real quick, just wanted to say the whole thing of the this great city and it's being a great merchant and everything else. Again, who controls the finances? You get back, it was the Jesuits that created the Federal Reserve Act and everything else. Jesuits scheming with that whole thing. Uh, the World Bank, a lot of that stuff goes right back to the Jesuits. The Vatican is the one controlling the finances. So, yep. you know, and, and, you know, even look at Italy. I mean, it's it's this very ancient shipping port and all the shipping that goes in through that area. You know, <clears throat> it's huge over there. Well, that's where the money's at. It's not in America. It's funny, Brian. I looked up if, earlier, like, Italy is, like, in the top, I think it's, like, in the top five, like, richest countries. Mm -hmm. You know, I find that very interesting, you know. America's not in there, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so you know what? When you're when you're interested, all you got to do is get a drone shot going over a bay a bay port, and you can make up anything you want along the way. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, let's do you have anything else here in this area? Nothing really. You you actually you hit on the uh, them controlling the finances, which which is what I have in my notes as well. Mm -hmm. Um, what's the next point? You can go forward to about one uh, twenty nine. Okay. And to tell them of the evil that God's going to bring upon them. Then as soon as he's done reading, he takes the book that he's reading. He ties it to a great stone and throws it in the river. And they say, wait, I want to read that one more time. No. Nope. He goes into the, the river and he says, the shall Babylon see. Hey, it's never going to be inhabited. It's never going to be never coming back. That's how Jeremiah ends his prophecy about Babylon. And that matches perfectly with the prophecy of Babylon in Revelation. Revelation 18, 21 says this, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea saying, thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. All throughout the Bible, when you look at the destruction of Babylon, one thing is very clear, that Babylon is going to be destroyed and there will be no inhabitants in Babylon forever. So here's my question. What doesn't fit in Revelation 18? I mean, you just, you read through Revelation 18, it all fits. <laughs> okay. As we've, as we've proven throughout this podcast, it does not, not, not in the least bit. <laughs> you know, um, what did that guy say a few minutes ago? No, um, Babylon's going to be destroyed by who? Uh, it's Jesus Christ is going to destroy it, you know? Mm -hmm. And they keep they keep going over the verses and they read the verses and it says city. They just keep saying city when they read it, and then they'll change it to nation. Yep. You know, they just how can these people be this, you know, deceptive? How I guess it's not so much how can they be deceptive because we know they're lost, you know, false teachers and things, but you know, how can their people be so gullible? 
Mm-hmm. Unreal. I think when you go to these Babel buildings like Stephen Harrison has, I just think a lot of people go there for the 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 social club, basically. You know. Yeah. They don't care. Most of them don't probably. I mean, Steve isn't doing anything like that. It's just all about, you know, just, just believe, you know, just believe and just, you know, you can say you're a Christian, you know, you, you, you're saved, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I actually, I actually got a letter years ago from some people that had visited Steven Anderson's church. They were living in that area down there or whatever. And they visited and they said it was super creepy. They said all these people were coming up to him and asking him all these weird questions and things. <laughs> they said they were just going, okay, yeah, we're not coming back here again. It was really, really weird. So it's funny too. And most of Steven Aaronson's followers, they use profanity. You know, like they'll, they'll, they'll curse me out in my, in my comments. Oh, I yeah. had one, I had one, I'm going to show in a video at some point. He just said some of those awful things you would never, you never think a Christian would say. You know, it probably make a, a sailor blush. Some of these th- things these people say. Yeah, I, I agree. I've I've got some real bad comments from his uh, followers as well. Yep. All right, where are we going from here? Um. Oh, uh, just where are we at on the time? Just keep letting it play because it's it. Pretty soon, coming up here, he actually says, "What about uh, when did the U.S. kill the saints?" And he says, "Well, that's a future fulfillment." <laughs> okay, just, just keep letting that play. Sitting a queen, thinking nothing's bad gonna happen. Prideful, tons of riches, tons of wealth. The great importer of the world, the world empire. You say, "Well, when did when did the U.S. kill the saints and prophets?" Well, that's going to happen during the tribulation when the fifth seal is opened and the martyrs of Jesus are, are slaughtered worldwide. Uh, really? Wow. Okay. Man, the guy needs to be horsewhipped. I mean, give me a break. <laughs> All of the, the millions and millions of Christians that were slaughtered down through the years, and just the wars and the death and everything else. I just, Oh, that's nothing. It's just going to be the people in the future, you know, and there's actually a verse of scripture, revelation chapter 18. Let me get the verse real quick here. Um, revelation chapter up here. 18 verse 24. You want to get that verse, brother Jeremy, All right. you know, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all, that were slain upon the earth. All. Well, it's talking about throughout history, in other words, because mm-hmm. it all ties back to that whole Babylonian and the, the five kingdoms. It ties back to them. Yeah, it does. Um, uh, there was one verse, I'm trying to figure out where it was, where it says that, you know, God remembered her sins or something like that revelation chapter 16 um verse 19 okay. i don't know why you just went to john from revelation that was weird all right and in the great city was divided into three parts the cities of the nations fell and great babylon came in remembrance before god to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Yeah, that's the one I'm looking for. That's it. So, yeah, I mean, God remembered. God remembers what she has done. You know, it's been it's been going on for a long time. It's not just a recent or a new thing that's going to be coming out. You know, it's a long period of time. You know, and you think about all the Jews that Hitler slaughtered and stuff like that. Um, you know, that's nothing compared to what you know and and to say that that all of a sudden he's that america is just going to slain you know billions of saints in the tribulation i seriously doubt there's going to be billions of people saved during that time period give me a break you know that that doesn't even compare that wouldn't even compare to hitler's you know uh crusade of the jews i would say
but yeah, you know, he, they would uh, slaughter a lot of people that were that refused to take the mark, that weren't believers. Yeah, I could believe that. You know, you know, but he's saying that Christians, you know, yeah, okay, because he's post trib. So go figure. All right. America is not the America of our fathers and grandfathers. It, it, sadly, it, you know, it breaks my heart to say that. But we have to be realistic here. America is not the America of our past. I see nothing in history that gives America a free get out of jail free card. Where it's amongst their emotions. I don't know why the consequences wouldn't be the same for us. Let me tell you something. Better take this seriously. No nation, look at Israel, uh, biblical Israel in the Old Testament. They did not escape the judgment of God. Even as late in their history as having a good king like Josiah brought great revival. In spite of that revival, it wasn't long before the destruction came. You know, you and I don't know how much time we have. We may be gone tomorrow. We need to work for today. And every day when you get up, you need to ask yourself, what can I do for God today? And you need to ask yourself, what do, does my neighbor need? What do my friends need? What do those people out there who are lost, what do they need? You know what they need. They need the, 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 the saving touch of Jesus Christ. And you may be the only one that can give that to them. Okay. Maybe God has put you. Yeah, I've had enough of that. Yeah. Did you hear what he said? They need the saving touch of Jesus. Yeah, I heard that. Yep. You know, little Catholic reference there to the Pope, get a touch from the Pope. Yep. No, 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 never. <laughs> you know, it's it, it, it's funny too. Like, where's the separation from the world? You know, where's that at? You know, he's talking about, oh, your family, your friends and stuff like that. Okay, what about separation from the world? If you're really saved, you're not going to have worldly friends, and your family's going to is going to they can't st they're not going to be able to stand being around you, like with me, for example. You know, so where's that at? No, they're not saved. You know, no morals, none of any kind. The amount of lies in this movie is complete and utter proof that they're not saved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, that one guy before was using another straw man argument again to say, "Oh, we, what makes us think that we can't escape? We're America's not going to escape anything, okay? The whole world's going to fall under God's judgment during yep. that time. It's God's wrath being poured out for seven years to say that. Oh, we can just escape that. What's that got? What's that got to do with America being Babylon? You know, it's another straw man argument again." I mean, so many of these. I mean, just let's just get a bag of straws and make a straw man argument. Yeah, everything, you know. So, so yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. There's plenty of other uh, nations that were destroyed because because of sin, but it, they, it doesn't make them Babylon. Like Sodom and Gomorrah yeah. wasn't Babylon. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Yep. In the past someone today please reach out to them if you're watching this video and you do not know the lord as your savior the lord jesus christ god made flesh you need to get saved because destruction is coming you are a victim of that destruction you will not only go straight from the fire of destruction here but you'll go straight to the fires of hell he that believeth on the son hath everlasting life but he that believeth not the son shall not see life but the wrath of god abideth on him I mean, if you do not believe on Jesus Christ today, the Bible says that God's wrath is abiding on you right now. And if you're not saved, if you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be on the receiving end of this destruction. But not only that, after we die, the Bible teaches that anyone who does not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ will go to hell for all eternity to be punished for their sins. And if you're watching this film and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior, this is your doom and destruction that's being prophesied in Revelation chapter 18. 
if I was not a Christian and I studied what's coming in this new world order and the government is <laughs> coming down on us rapidly, satanic mentality of Babylon to the nearest place I could find and get saved, find a piece of dirt to sit on or sit, kneel down and get next to your couch and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Would you save me right now? We Christians are going to be in heaven by the time the final destruction of Babylon takes place. But woe unto anyone who is living in the United States of America when this happens. Friends, peace is not the future of the world. The Bible says when they shall say peace, then sudden destruction shall come upon them. Um, it says peace and safety. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just leave out more scripture there, buddy? Yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's funny too. You see, uh, Kent Hovind actually say, "I'm a sinner." You know, and then Stephen Anderson, all he said was believe. Yep. Mm -hmm. I find that interesting. And Stephen Anderson kind of looked away. You know, and was like, you know, kind of like rejecting what Kent Hovind was saying there. I find that funny. All right, where are we going from here? You just want to keep playing it? I think. Uh... I think that might be the end of the movie. I think the rest of it after that is just like getting into the um, the credits and then like I think just a bunch of junk of Anderson preaching, uh, I guess, more about ba Babylon or whatever. So I think we've actually reached the end of the movie for the most part. Yeah, yeah. I'm, at minute, I'm at hour and 33 minutes and there's like 15 minutes left on it. So Yeah, I'm pretty sure the rest of it is just credits. Okay, well, I'll delete it then. Yeah. It's it's he's preaching the, the his false gospel to a bunch of poor children in Africa. Yeah. So. Right. All right. Let me see if I can figure out how to stop screen sharing now. Okay. But yeah, there, there you have it, brethren. Babylon, USA, debunked and exposed. And if you're, you know, if you're someone that follows Steve Anderson and got through this whole podcast and saw these lies and still choose to follow a false prophet and teacher like that, get saved. I mean, I feel really bad for you. The fact that you would sit there and and see all these lies get exposed, and yet you would still stand behind and defend this man. I mean, it's it's bad enough. You know, I, I have a video on this channel. Um, as well, it's a it's a compilation of Brian's uh, mini videos on marching to Zion debunked, and I put them all <clears throat> into one massive movie and put it on my channel for everyone to watch. And a bunch of Anders Snake followers came on there and just wrote nasty, disgusting comments, cussing up a storm, defending Steven Anderson. If you actually are one of those people and you sat through this and you're still going to defend the guy, I mean, God's judgment is upon you. Because that's just really sad that you would worship a man that much that lies that much that we've proven. Yep. Well, I think we ought to read the first six verses of Revelation chapter 17 and go over them in detail and show yep. why they did not include those in the film. Amen. Okay. So Jeremy. I'll do Jeremy. It. Yeah, I was gonna say Jeremy and his cool little uh, Chromebook there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Man, uh, I'm so glad I got away from Windows. Okay. All right. So we're just going to read uh, Revelation 17. That was, that was, that was well, the idea. Just the first six verses. We'll just read one verse at a time, then anybody can make comments on it. Okay. All right. And there came out of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Comments? Okay. The, you know, the, 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 uh, Sitteth upon many waters is later identified as people. And what's the biggest church in the entire world? The Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church, yep. So again, um, America doesn't have the biggest population. 
So if you if you want to make uh, um, well, this is we're dealing with the population of America. Well, it's not the many waters that, you know, the Roman Catholic Church is the largest religion on the planet. That's and absolutely true. And also, it's mentioned that many peoples, nations, and tongues, and Roman Catholicism is in every nation, and they absolutely have pe all kinds of people of different languages, all a part of their false uh, their false system. I mean, it's perfect. It fits in perfectly with that verse. And their system is a system of control, confessing your sins to a priest, you know, having to go take the mass, having to do all these works because that's what works salvation is. It's complete and utter control, control of the people. So, I mean, to say, you know, America, wow, you know, it's, we may house a few people of different languages, languages and nations, but do we really, you know, control them as if a religious system? No, not in the least bit. Yep, absolutely. You know. All right. Verse two. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. You know, I touched on this earlier. Uh is America you know, is is everybody committing fornication with America? You know. No, obviously not. There's a lot of countries that hate us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yet you see every political leader going and bowing down before the Pope. Yep. You know, yeah. all the time. Just like their, you know, church leaders are going over there and meeting with the Pope. Um, all right. Verse three. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names and bla of blasphemy, having seven heads and 10 horns. Full of names of blasphemy. Does America have names of blasphemy? You know? No. And yet you have with the Vatican, you have them, you know, the Pope calling himself the Vicar of Christ. You mm -hmm. have, uh, you know, the Carius Philly D and everything. I mean, just there are so many, so many blasphemous things. I mean, think about, you know, Jesus or, well, you know, God is called the, you know, um, holy and reverend is his name. He's called the Holy Father. Mm -hmm. Catholics take both titles. They steal from him. You know? Right. So, you know, you have in the Bible, First Timothy chapter three, or you're, you're called, you know, there's it talks about the office of a bishop. But in Catholicism, they have an archbishop. Yep. You know, over and above what the Bible says. Right. So, the names of blasphemy there, there, these guys are all every Catholic priest, according to the catechism, is another Christ. So the whole system is blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also want to throw in too, you know, immaculate conception, you know, Mary being sinless, you know, that's blasphemy. And saying that Mary is the uh, mediator for us, that's also blasphemy. Um, and also uh, the Trinity itself. You know the three god system is also a uh, pagan you know god the son god the holy spirit there's no scripture to support either one you know god the father yes god the son god the holy spirit no those are name those are blasphemous names okay and and that uh that's something that's really going to stir the the bees nest when you get when you get into that because you know you you begin to identify that you know the the three god trinity system the three um, three separate persons, how that also is blasphemous because it takes Jesus and bumps him down to a lesser God figure. You know, God the Son. Well, the truth is he is God the Father. All the, the fullness of the Godhead dwell uh, within him bodily. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what the Bible says. And there, and it also tells us over and over again, you know, there's, uh, there, uh, there is no other name under heaven that which we are saved, and that's the name of Jesus. And you know, the yeah. fact that the pa the pagan uh, trinity would sit there and try to bump them down, and when when you actually sit there and speak up and you know proclaim the Lord as God the Father because that's what He is, you'll get all these you know crazy uh, trinitarians going after you saying, no, 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 He's God the Son, He's God the Son, God the Father is up here. It's like, well, why are you doing that? You're basically blaspheming the Lord. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's funny too because you just said that verse in Acts chapter in Acts chapter four. There's no name under heaven which which we must be saved. Um, Isaiah 43, 11 says, I, even I am the Lord and beside me, there is no savior, you know? Amen. Okay. If there's only one savior and Jesus Christ is not God, the father, then Jesus Christ is not God. Yep. 
you know, and, and just to bring up the point I did last week, you know, um, if we're creating God's image, for example, you know, and there's a Trinity, then where's our, th where's our second, third person? You know, why don't we have walk around with three persons all the time? You know, I thought we're made in God's image, right? <laughs> it's stupid. Mm -hmm. Yep. I noticed too in verse three there, Revelation 17, verse three, it says, I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Mother is church. America, is America a woman? Nope. No. Nope. Holy Mother Church. Yeah, not really. Holy Mother Church. That's what they call the Roman Catholic Church. Yep. America is a man. It's Uncle Sam. You know? So. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, mm -hmm. All right. We'll move on now, I guess. And the woman was arrayed in purple in scarlet color and decked with gold, precious stones, pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness, filthiness of her fornication. Um, last time I checked, I don't remember the American flag being purple and scarlet and decked out with, you know, gold, precious stones and pearls and having a golden cup in her hand, you know? Nope. Nope. In Ooh. fact, but I do know who, I do know who does have that, uh, those colors. That would be uh, this right here, you know, these insane amount of robes of purple and scarlet all the time. And the fact that they're, you know, Holy Mother Church gold, you know, all these, all these, this crazy, like, um, million dollar art, art all over their walls. Like, these fit the description perfectly. But yet, somehow, it's America. I saw I saw one of the brothers in the uh, the comment section for the, the podcast earlier. He, he made a joke. He was like, he was like, well, you see, if you take the the red and the blue and you mix them together, then you get purple. <laughs> uh -huh. that, was funny. that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> but then you don't have red at that point. You just have yeah. purple. Exactly. <laughs> but it's just, you know, mm. and they, they completely skipped it in that whole movie. Because they know darn well if they tried to hit on that, they couldn't do it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and um, I think uh, Rome's colors have always been purple and scarlet. Because I remember reading uh, in the gospel accounts when uh, Christ was crucified, Rome put on uh, him a robe that was uh, purple and scarlet, purple and scarlet robe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, absolutely right. Yeah. And of course, you have the golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Um, what church is more known for elevating the, the cup? Mm hmm. You know, and, and it's so funny, you know, too, that uh, one of my favorite things to bring up to Catholics is they say about, you know, well, the, the bread and, you know, the, the wafer and the wine become the literal flesh and blood of Christ. What about all the prohibitions in Scripture about eating blood? That's a problem. Oh, but you see, John chapter 6 says we must eat the, eat the flesh of Jesus and drink his blood. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what God rule says. Uh-huh. And when the Scriptures contradict... Catholic doctrine, well, you just go with the church fathers or the traditions of the church. You know, what did Jesus Christ say about, you know, why do you also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? Yeah. Matthew 15. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, and uh, another thing I remembered uh from from the movie i didn't have like any time stamps down or nothing but because um, i know we're now talking about how america cannot be the woman because i know that in the film at some point we didn't go over it uh, we don't really need to go there it was like more of a minor point but uh et i think um anderson talks about the uh statue, 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 statue of liberty, liberty yeah. yeah like lady liberty and i know you could try to compare that to um he made a reference to Prometheus, um, how he compared uh, 
I said, he said the Statue of Liberty was uh, was actually was actually like fashioned after Prometheus. I don't really know how true that is, but the point is like because I don't know if you study Greek mythology out a little bit. I know there is like references to that. Um, it's kind of vexing how like Prometheus is basically compared to Satan. Like if you read the the story, how uh, Prometheus like um, he. Um, and he, he like stole a fire from Zeus from like Mount Olympus and then he gave it to man and then fire represents light so Prometheus gave light to man so he's like Lucifer he gives light to man very satanic but the point is he said that uh, Stephen Anderson said that uh, Lady Liberty is like like uh, Prometheus and stuff like that and now there there's all these like false gods like in America all these idols and statues and stuff uh, which is really like a a, like a weak argument because you know um, everyone you know in that time of Jacob's trouble worships the beast like there's not going to be like any other gods um, because you know in Second Thessalonians 2 4 you know the Antichrist you know um, he exalts himself above all that is called all that is called God you know he sits of the temple you know saying that you know that he is God so mm -hmm. there's, there's really going to be no other gods there in that time um, everyone's going to worship the beast. So saying that, you know, there's um, comparing that to um, America is not a very good argument at all. So, but no, I don't think uh, saying that using Lady Liberty is uh, saying you can't say that's, you know, America there because I think um, I heard at one time, wasn't that a gift from the French? Didn't the French actually make that? It looks like a gift to America or something. Yeah. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, something like that. It's it's funny that you mentioned that because I did have that I did have that timestamp in my notes. That was at fifty six minutes forty eight seconds. But oh. all I all I wrote in my notes was uh, Illuminati pagan rabbit trail. That's basically all that part is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Forget about it. Yeah, you know, I was thinking just now um, we should make a, a couple like a bunch of like little. Uh, like men out of straws and put them in a bag and send them to Stephen Harrison and put <laughs> arguments on the outside. Oh, yeah. Just a little on top of it. He can get yeah. straw man argument. No, uh, better. Better yet, we'll make them into trading cards. That's what we'll do. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I'll, I'll put on there uh, novice, easily burn with fire because he's made out of straw. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, move on to verse five now. now. Upon her forehead was named written Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Again, mother of harlots, you know, mother yeah. church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has uh, daughters. How many uh, churches have come out of Roman Catholicism? And are now subservient back to the Vatican. Yeah, I can have lunch. You know. Um. All right, verse six. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Admiration. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I did a video on that years ago. One of the FAQ questions. They said, "Why did he admire? You know, why did John admire? Um, you know, Mystery Babylon." And basically, I think in the context of it, I think he's actually, you know, somewhat deceived because they're talking so much about Jesus and everything else, and uh, and he's he's wondering with great admiration. And you see the very next verse, the, the angel saying, "Wherefore didst thou marvel?" You know, mm -hmm. and. You know, it just the the power, the influence, the all the big impressive things. I actually knew a guy, um, met a guy the one time in a Baptist church, and he was um, actually in a choir in the choir that sang at St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. And um, and he said that, uh, you know, he said back when he was singing there, he said the the he was getting into the thing of tonal. Um, frequencies in music and he said it was the mind control within St. Peter's Basilica with the 
pipe organs and the and just the huge big ceilings and everything else he said it's so powerful it's just overwhelming you just kind of are almost in a trance when you're in the place you know with the spiritual plus also these extremely powerful music and everything else and the visual and everything it just puts you into this trance and i think that's what's why john is is there kind of going whoa you know wow and whatever you know it just it cannot be america i mean again how can you fit that into america it's yeah great. yeah that's a very good point why would he wonder at america like what is he is he in new york and like staring at the empire state building like it's not that cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it's really not <laughs> it's really not <laughs> mm -hmm. you know and of course the woman drunken with the blood of the of the saints and with the martyrs blood of the martyrs of jesus um we were talking about this brother jeremy and myself and the thing of you know one of the areas of saint peter's basilica they actually have a painting a big mural on one of the walls of the saint bartholomew's day massacre it was eighteen thousand protestants were slaughtered in ireland and um and you know they have a painting of it on the one wall they celebrate it Yeah. Oh, what you see, there's no oh, salvation God. without the shedding of the blood of the heretic, you know. So, I mean, when, when has America ever done that? When has America ever killed Christians? Yep. You know? Mm -hmm. Yep. And, you know, back on the thing of Revelation chapter 17, verse 5, another point I wanted to bring up there. Um, upon her forehead was a name written. Um, again, the Catholics are very famous for doing things upon the forehead. Revelation mm -hmm. chapter 20 talks about the mark being upon the forehead. I do believe Revelation 13 teaches that it's in the right hand or in the forehead. But I think that there's also a visible mark. And, you know, a lot of people have, you know, you know, tried to predict what this thing is going to be. It's an actual number 666 or is it? the trochetra or a QR code or, you know, there's all this stuff. What if it's just as simple as the, the mark that they put upon the forehead of the Catholics on Ash Wednesday? Mm -hmm. That's a very good point. I mean, you know, they've been doing that for a long time and uh, it just, I don't know, it's, it's just weird. And I think, I do think of the Trinity thing is also going to be a big part of it. Because just to see, I mean, how much my enemies have just gone ballistic and are just attacking. Oh, we, by the way, I forgot to say this. Um, my channel got a copyright strike against it now, too. <laughs> a video that's been up for years, and all of a sudden, oh, it's copyrighted material, and, you know, we got to take the video down and stuff. So they're just, but they just went crazy after I came out against the Trinity. And you understand, you read the, the um, catechism. It's the core teaching of the Roman Catholic Church. It is. Yep. It really is. Um, and, it's, and it's complete blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, if you look at the, uh, I, I've been doing this study for a while now, and I've told Brian this before. If you actually look at the Antichrist system, it's a three person God. Really? Yep. You know? You have the dragon, you have the beast, you have the false prophet. Okay, you think about it for a second. All right, you look at you look at what the scripture says. All right, we'll go to Revelation thirteen for for example. I'm going to show this real quick. Um, okay, and it's funny too. Revelation sixteen says there's three unclean spirits that jump out as well. So, um. But uh, but right here, it says, I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. It's funny, too, because uh, what does Babylon, you know, Mystery Babylon have? Names of blasphemy. You know? Oh, it, the Catholic Church is not part of the world system. Sure they're not. Um, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth 
as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his he one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. Um, basically, he's going to fake, you know, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Going to counterfeit it, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, and they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And the and they worship the beast. See, look at this. They worship the dragon as well. Okay, and gave and gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast as well, saying, "Who's like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him?" And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given him to make war with the saints and, over, and to overcome them. And power was given on him all, over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. Um, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him who is in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. It's okay. So you go down here, um, verse 11, and it says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Now, I believe personally that when he calls down the fire from heaven, I believe that's when the Antichrist is going to rise from, you know, the resurrection after he's been wounded. I believe that's what's going to heal him, you know. That's just why I believe on that whole thing. I believe that's the reason why he calls down fire from heaven. You know, others may disagree with me on that, but that's what I think it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, he deceived them that dwell on the earth that me by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image of the beast, which had a wound by a sword and did live. He had power to get of life unto the image of the beast. The image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as will not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead that no man might buy or sell save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay. Now, here's where it gets into the three-person trinity. This is where I'm about to explain it. You have the false prophet marking. You know, he's like the spiritual part of it. Okay, this holy, the the satanic spirit, marking their people. You know, God also marks His people in the forehead during that time. Satan counterfeits it with the mark of the beast, and the false prophet represents the third person, the the spirit part of it. You see, it's just like with us today, we're still with the Holy Spirit, of, Holy Spirit, unto the day of redemption, the Holy Spirit of promise unto the day of redemption. Well, Satan marks his children with what they mark with his spirit, the mark of the beast. So you have that and you have the physical manifestation, the Antichrist, the beast. Then you have the father, the dragon. You see a three person trinity. It's right there. You know, mm -hmm. so I just want to make that point. Yep. Yep. The interesting thing is too with that that you have um, Oops, I didn't mean to click off the Revelation chapter seventeen, where it talks about verse three. I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, and you'll see depictions of the Trinity, where you have the Father, and then the sissy son, and then the little bird, and then you have Mary, and she's kind of up there too. So. You know, I just find that interesting that Revelation 17, verse 3, the woman is controlling the beast. So mm -hmm. there's a woman involved in this whole Trinity concept in the future, just like in Roman Catholicism. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not only that, the the Roman, the Roman Catholic system being, you know, so so uh, pagan. I mean, uh, they, you know, the I think it was uh, the Old Testament. I want to say it's it was 
fir first or second Kings, I think, where, or uh, Chronicles, where they're baking uh, cookies to the Queen of Heaven and things like that. And that all translates right on over into Roman Catholicism to begin with. Their Queen of Heaven is, you know, Mary, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, getting back to uh, yeah, Revelation seventeen six, where it talks about the blood of the saints. There, I mean, yeah, we have uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs. I mean, we have a a whole um, you know testimony there of of the blood of the saints down through um, down through history. And yeah, there's yeah, there's um, a lot of awful stuff that you can read about that uh, that Rome has done to to Christians there in the past. And, you know, a lot of torture devices and, yeah, it's, uh, you know, burning people at the stake. And, yeah, it's uh, it's very uh, it's very hard book to read. It actually took me a while to read that one. But, uh, you know, I eventually got through it. But, uh, but yeah, you um, yeah, read Fox's Book of Martyrs and, uh, yeah, fits in right there with 17.6. Uh, mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, and other verses as well, so. Yep. all right um yeah i was gonna say something too about that you know um i read i, I was reading upon this one thing uh it was about the like different torture devices and stuff like that you know i mean you have like the rack you have like the iron maiden i mean why do you need that stuff for, you know, it's just, that's a, they want to inflict as much pain as possible on those that oppose them. And it's funny because they cannot stand anybody that believes in grace through faith. They can't stand it. They can't stand the thought of God giving mercy to somebody, you know, and it's yeah. just, it's just ridiculous. Um, I remember when I was in the, uh, the street preaching movement, they hate grace through faith. They hate it. And uh, it's funny. I got into an argument with one of them. On, uh, I didn't really get into an argument with him. I was really just kicking him around and toying with him because he's an idiot. But um, uh, this one street papist, and he was, uh, I told him that, you know, you're just a, I was like, you're just a closet Catholic. And if you had the chance, you'd, you'd burn me at the stake if you wanted to. And uh, I was like, Christians have been killed by, you know, devils like you in the past. And he said, uh, he said, well, you may not be killed by, you know, you may not be killed by me, but you'll be killed by others. I was like, OK, you know, he's a, he's a street preacher. OK. You know, street preacher. It's it's funny because most of the people that profess to be Christians on YouTube are Catholic. You look at what they actually believe. They believe in Roman Catholicism, hands down. You know, yeah. they their beliefs line up with Rome. You know, and they hate anybody that has you know grace through faith. They hate that. They hate that doctrine. You know, if you're not working your way to heaven, you know, they they can't stand that idea of not having to work their way to heaven. Yeah, that's and why. I, I'm sorry, Tim. I was just going to say, and that's why I've been so hard on that whole street preaching movement, just because of that. Yeah. And not only that, just the, the amount of devilish hatred that they have. I mean, the idea that they actually dug up uh, Oliver Cromwell's body and took the head of it when he was already dead. I mean, how like hateful and angry do you get? I mean, that's some serious devils right there to go and take a corpse that's already dead and just cut off its head just because you hate them that much. I mean, drunken with the blood of the saints and the mar martyrs, that description goes straight to Rome. I mean, that is just out, you know, outrageous. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the one that did that, King Charles II, it was King James, and then you had King Charles and then his son, Charles II, because mm -hmm. uh, he was banished from, from England um, by the parliamentary forces if, with the English Civil War. And when he came back in and basically overthrew Richard Cromwell, Oliver Cromwell's son, um, he came, comes back in, and like you said, Brother Tim, he dug up the body of Oliver Cromwell. They publicly beheaded it. 
just like it happened to King Charles the first, you know, they were kind of getting a little revenge thing, I guess there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but there was also, uh, I did some study into the whole thing. Um, these guys were also into different types of magical practices where they would actually use, um, they would use bones from dead people's bodies and basically put them into recipes and grind them up and drink the powder and stuff. And they, they were some really, really sick people. King Charles II, and he was just, he was a womanizing, fornicating, just, he was a very, very, very wicked king. Extremely wicked. Yeah. And I find that funny, too, because a lot of, even modern day Catholics, a lot of them, they're involved in all kinds of weird stuff. I mean, I've known, I've known several Catholics that were all into tarot, car, tarot cards, and it's like, you know, you got these dumb little statues and, you know, little figures of like angels and Jesus all throughout your house. But over here you have this big stack of tar tarot cards that you just sit there every night and mess with. It's like, I mean, you know, just disgusting. Yep. All right. Well, yeah, I want to... Where do y'all want to go from here? Well, I guess um, I don't know. I think I I think we hit everything. Is there anything else? Um, or anybody wants to add? No, I don't think I got anything else to add. I mean, just. I mean, only thing I can really say is that you know, this is the uh, the latter days, you know, before the catching away. I mean, we're close, mm -hmm. I believe. And I, all I can say is that you know, we're going to have these people come along that look like us and talk like us, but yet there's always that poison there, you know. And and it comes out they are just, I mean, they won't speak against Rome for two seconds. Uh, and I find that funny too, because a lot of the so-called truthers out there are like that, you know, they won't come out against Roman Catholicism. It's always, you know, it's always this, like Brian said, or Brian said earlier, the new age, this new age, like Christianity or whatever is the, is like the Babylon now or whatever, you know, it's not Roman Catholicism, you know? So, I mean, I mean, the modern church is very wicked. Don't get me wrong, but you know, <laughs> Um, a uh, bunch of wicked people that's going around saying that I can live in sin all I want to and just, you know, it's it's okay. God pay for my sins. I can just do what I want. You know, um, there's no hell. You have these people like Rob Bell from hell, you know, uh, they, they go around saying, oh, you can just, there's no hell. Everybody's going to make it to heaven. You know, he's just a feminine little sissy, you know, and you have, uh, you know, that, hell song uh, church which says that um which basically just promotes fornication in their whole whole congregation you know yeah they're very wicked you know but that's not the problem that's not the issue that's not the core issue here you know and that's what the new agers really harp on a lot of times they just harp on these the modern church you know and you'll see like these exposed videos of joel Osteen and stuff like that these you know, be honest with you, I don't, reason why I don't go after the, you know, so-called, what do you call them, the prosperity teachers, reason why I don't waste my time on them is because they're just a smoke screen to hide you, to hide the real, the real false prophets, in my opinion. Yeah, and, you know, even <laughs> the uh, modern day, you know, uh, you know, professing Christians, you know, mainstream Christianity, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, prosperity gospel. And, you know, they're, you know, like, uh, I don't know, I want to say like pretty much 100 percent, you know, Catholic anyway. You know, I know, you know, <laughs> Kenneth Copeland is you know, his followers. I know there's some stuff on that. And but yeah, they use new versions. Uh, you know, they're, they're false doctrine, their Trinity thing. And they believe a lot of the same stuff as Catholics. I mean, you know, they're lost now. And so, yeah, when, you know, after the rapture, I mean, yeah, they're going to worship the beast. They're going to be, 
really Catholic then. So. Well, I, well, I think I want to also address, address here is that I know a lot. One of the one of the greatest things that I, you know, you hear from these apostates that follow Anderson is they'll go on to say like, they'll basically say, well, he speaks against Roman Catholicism. He preaches messages against Catholics and all this stuff. Look, if you're that dumb to not realize that's how people work deception, they will. The Jesuits will speak against their own church if it's to hide themselves. I mean, it's literally in their creeds they they take a vow they can lie about their about their church in order to keep their covers basically so if you're going to throw that argument you you have that's another straw man because even though he has preached a couple of you know sermons against catholics doesn't mean squat the fact of the matter is is half basically everything he said in this doc in this video everything he speaks against the jews it's all lines up with rome anyways the guys it might as well be ecumenical because he's already right there with them on all their uh, doctrines Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's a really important, you know, point there, brother. And, and that's, you know, a lot of people come out with this thing. They say, well, you know, the Catholics are right in some areas and whatever else, you know, and we've talked about that before. You actually look at what Catholics are supposedly, quote unquote, right in and they're wrong in every single one of them. The Catholics yeah. are not right on anything. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it, it just this this whole thing of of. Um, you know, uh, well, if, if anybody speaks against Catholicism, that automatically makes them not a Catholic. Again, you know, that's yeah, I totally agree. That's that's ridiculous. Um, I don't know. It's just. I don't know. Yeah, it's funny because uh, I remember I was telling Brian this. There was this, you know, punk kid uh, saying that I need to repent of my denial of the trinity and stuff like that and saying that oh because you you say that catholics don't have anything right and i was like no they don't and uh, he's like well they believe in the virgin birth you know and stuff like that and i was like no they don't they believe in immaculate conception i was like it just shows you what a novice you are you know you have these people come along they have a lot of head knowledge and yet they're just so they're so prideful and they'll think that oh catholics have some things right just like y'all were saying and that's not the case at all <coughs> And, um, you know, um, and just getting back to, you know, the street preachers, they, they speak against Rome on the streets and stuff like that, or not Rome. They speak against the Catholic church and say, we don't worship Mary and stuff like that. Big whoop, whoop do you do? Does it, does it, you know, disqualify them from Catholicism? You know, you look at what they believe it's, it lines up perfectly with Roman Catholicism, you know? So just like a lot of other people out there, that are professing Christians, you know, they just, you look at what they actually believe. It lines up with Rome, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the slight differences that these people have are all going to be resolved when the Antichrist shows up and they're here. And all of a sudden they're going to say, well, you know, we differ in some areas, but I think we're all, <laughs> I mean, Catholic just means universal. So, mm -hmm. you know, that they're going to come and I mean, you know, I did a video years ago, on the thing of the Roman Catholic Church's acceptance of different denominations because of their method of baptism. And it's funny because as long as you baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, uh, that's your, you know, if you do that, then you are considered an official recognized church by the, the Vatican. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, and the and the thing is that you know, like the like uh, Jeremy was just saying, the apostasy of the body of Christ. This is stuff that really nowadays it just you know it doesn't surprise me anymore. That when I see these these heretics coming out with all this weird stuff, it's like it's it's been foretold. You know, it's it's a part of a prophecy that they're they're in the uh, the body of Christ is in apostasy right now. So, of course, you're going to have people sitting here and getting all, you know, the, the bee, uh, like I said earlier, the bees, uh, the bees nest getting uh, stirred when you say things like, you know, I don't believe the, the, tr the false doctrine of the pagan trinity and stuff like that because they're all stuck in apostasy and heresy. And uh, I want to go over um, uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. 
Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. The Catholic Trinity, all those things, that is all complete and utter fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. So it's our job to sit here and really, you know, endure endure this stuff and really fight against these false systems because this stuff is just ridiculous and we see how many people fall, fall for it i mean how many people follow anderson's channel now last i checked it was like eighty six thousand. you're gonna tell 90, me 80 000. 90, 000? 90 000 people following this guy's channel when he's clearly lying about the bible and it can be it can be proven even if someone who's read revelation 17 maybe just once or twice that's itching ears absolutely Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's uh, that's why, you know, I've, I've got this stuff doesn't usually surprise me. It just I mean, it, it does and it doesn't. It doesn't surprise me because I know it's been foretold, but it does surprise me that he gets away with tiptoeing around all the stuff he did in this in this movie. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, and, yeah, I just make a point about what, you know, Tim was saying there about the they will not endure sound doctrine. You know, the term where they are from the truth and be uh they'll heap themselves teachers and you look at a lot of these people that are you know following these teachers and stuff like that you know they don't actually look at what the guy is actually saying you know because i was a guilt i was guilty of that at one time and um you know i was i was deceived you know by levi price at one point you know and i had to read the bible for myself you know, and it's funny, a lot of these false prophets out there, they don't like it when you read the Bible yourself. You know, they want to be the teacher, you know, yep. kind of like Roman Roman Catholicism, you know. Um, but, you know, they don't like it when you read for yourself. And that's what I did, you know. And and, you know, it led me away from that cult, it made me realize it was fake. It was it was a fraud, you know. And and, you know, if people actually read for themselves, they might actually get saved, but you know what? They won't because they love the lies. They love, you know, they love the hypocrisy. You know, they love the itching ears. A lot of people love Senator Stephen Anderson because a lot of what he teaches is ear tickling, you know? So that's what I want to say about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if you get, if you get saved, you're going to at some point in time, have a confrontation with a Roman Catholic. It's just unavoidable. Um, you might not have any relatives or whatever else, but you'll have a coworker, you'll have a neighbor, you'll have somebody that you run into and it will get very uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> you know, if you're not a real outgoing person, you're kind of quiet or kind of shy. It's quite shocking when you get somebody that's a Catholic and they just tear into you and just whatever. I mean, <laughs> It's it's crazy, but see, you know, you go with the Anderson mindset. Well, there's no repentance, there's no change life after salvation, so you can just kind of agree to disagree with Catholics in the area, or you can even work with them like Stephen Anderson does in South Africa, and uh, you know, everything's fine. You, you know, we can just, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's I've already had that confrontation with Catholics. So, you know, because right down the road from my house is a Catholic church. So go figure. I've already had that issue. <laughs> it's not fun. So I, know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yep. I've had uh, yeah, I've had plenty of uh, run ins with uh, a couple of few of my family members are Catholic. And I mean, I mean, I'll never forget when I when I was first, like basically newly saved. And I walked into their house and I saw all the, the the little statues of angels and you know they had a huge like uh, thing of the Last Supper those paintings that that a lot of them have. And I walked in and I, I remember I was like newly saved and I was like, oh yeah, cool, that's right. I think uh, this you know my family's Christians and stuff. And I start sit down at the dinner table because I, I had come over for dinner. I start talking about the the scriptures and I started talking about Genesis because I was I was real heavy into creationism when I first got saved. So I was talking about evolution being fake and all this stuff. 
And I'll just never forget it. My, my one, one of my family members looks at me and says, what's up with the religion? And I'm just like, <laughs> you got like all these, you know, little statues of angels and stuff here. You got Jesus in the last supper on the wall. Why are you even asking me that question? I'm, I'm saved, you know? And he was like, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear it. And I was, yeah, I went to talk a little bit more. I got a little yelled at and I was like, okay, you know, and it, it became very awkward the rest of the night. Cause I was newly saved. And I was like, why don't they want to talk about Jesus? Like, yeah. And then find out later on Catholics are the complete opposite. They're flat out hypocrites. They'll have all these little statues and things to make themselves look good. You know, having a form of godliness yet denying the power thereof. And that's exactly what they are. And, um, boy, I'll never forget that. And, um, one of my family members actually passed away shortly after that. And I'm quite positive that they're uh, in hell right now. So that's, I mean, that's sad, but it's Catholic, that's Catholicism. It's been damning people to hell for years and years and years. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think that's something a lot of people don't understand either is the fact that it's, you know, Satan's great, greatest masterpiece is counterfeit. It's not the opposite. It's, it's a counterfeit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, you have John there and he's, He's wondering with great admiration when he sees Mystery Babylon. Um, branches of Mystery Babylon can get pretty close to the truth. Um, I've had a real hard time with the Baptist system because I, I learned so much from different Baptists. And and just, you know, I, I mean, I was in the whole Baptist system for a while and I was kind of a up and coming star, you know, in the whole Baptist system. And my wife started to kind of challenge me on some of the stuff and saying, because you know, she was raised Lutheran slash Catholic, and she's she's saying, you know, what about this practice? What about that practice? It's right there in the catechism, and the Baptists are doing it, and they're not just doing it. They're pridefully boasting about the man of God. Don't speak against the man of God. You know, the whole church building thing and the whole, you know, a lot of the stuff, and she's saying it. It's here in the catechism, and the Baptists are hardcore into this, and they keep standing up and lying, saying, you know, we believe the Bible, and we we're Bible believing Christians in all matters of faith and practice. And it's not true. They're lying. And, you know, and I, that was kind of a hard one for me to swallow, you know, for a while there, the whole Baptist system and how it's, it's another one of the daughters of the Harlem. This just really is that. I mean, it's sad to say, but you're right. It is, you know, I mean, I say a lot of, you know, uh, Baptists are falling for, you know the teachings of the catholic church i mean a lot of them hold the trinity go figure you know i mean the church building thing alone is ridiculous and i mean you can make a whole thing about that i mean i know brian's got a lot of, tons of videos about the baptists and stuff so <laughs> i mean but but yeah i mean it's i see that in my area you know mainly in my area though there's a lot of church of christ people a lot of Campbellites. That's one of the big things I run into here. So. Hmm. You know, water dogs. Yeah. As, uh, right. As I like to call them. I was just about to say that too. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, there's so many cults here where I live. I mean, I don't even bother naming them all. I'll run out of fingers i literally think there's that much <laughs> i mean yeah there's just about everything it's kind of a small town too i mean a lot of different cults it's kind of a kind of a small city here it's crazy yeah i live in a small town too i mean it's not very big here at all and there's like there's only one catholic church and i happen to be two miles away from it and and then the majority of people here are either Pentecostal, Church of Christ, and maybe one or two Baptist church churches, but you got to find them, you know. But that's the majority of what it is here: Pentecostal or charismatic, non-denominational mega churches, you know. Uh, you know, so that's basically what I run into here. I don't really run into a lot of Baptists here. <laughs> I, I got I got quite I got all those uh, denominations pretty close to my area too. But actually, the closest uh, I have to my area is actually a, a Kingdom Hall, and um, I haven't gotten to do it yet. But I've been uh, been there's been a couple of times the Jehovah's Witnesses have come by, 
but I was either sleeping or I, I live upstairs. So by the time I could run down to the door to, <laughs> to answer with, with my Bible, they were already walking down the street away from the house. And uh, one of these days I'm going to get them. I will. Uh, one of these days I'm, they're going to be at that door and they're going to ring and I'm going to come running down. I need like a buzz horn or something to go off when they get close to the door. So I can just <laughs> run down there and get my chance to witness to them because that'd be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Well, up here in Maine, it's almost completely Catholic up in this area. There's, you know, Baptists and I don't, I don't think there's any, well, there might be a Methodist church or two, but it's, they all work together that it's all just Catholic up here. Mm -hmm. But thankfully um, most of the people just, you know, they're, they're Christmas and Easter Catholics. They're not real hardcore, real devout, you know, but uh, we have a lot of the Knights of Columbus, you know, organizations up here and, Mm. Whatever, but it's it's you know religion's pretty much dead up here. It might as well just be atheistic. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It might as well just be atheistic everywhere because I mean a lot of people have uh, the church building thing, and that's pretty much their religion. You know, and they just go about you know just doing what they want to do. You know, and and don't care. I mean, it bothers me to know that it would bother me. You know, just to just to think that I'm wronging God on a daily basis, you know, and just thinking that I can live a careless life. I just don't understand how like I mean I do, they're lost obviously, but it's just it boggles my mind how they can just live like that and just not care. Not care at all what the Bible says, not care at all like what God says. You know, for me it's like it just it would just when I mess up it, it hurts and I and I feel rotten inside, you know. And and sometimes I just go into shutdown mode when I do, you know, I just turn everything off and just basically just want to be left alone until I get it fixed. You know. But them they just like, oh I just can go do my church thing and you know next night go out fornicating and you know whatever and just like it's okay, go to a big old party and get wasted and do drugs and stuff like that. And that's pretty much what it is. That's the way it is here. A lot of, a lot of the big denom or non denominational churches, the uh, charismatics, stuff like that. They just pretty much go live like the devil and go to church and speak like speak in tongues, you know. Yep. It's pathetic. It's not the church, you know, that it's not the church that Paul preached, that's for sure. Amen. Yeah. I mean, just the thought alone being around lost people bothers me. It just bothers me to know that I have to go be around lost people every day. Like whenever I get invited to go do family things, I'm like, uh, I might be seen, but I'm going to leave here shortly. And then my mom, I'll get a phone call later. Why didn't you stay longer? Eh, I got things to do. <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> I just I don't want to be around them. I don't. They're so much different than me. I'm not like them. And you say that's shallow. No, it's not. You know, the Bible tells us, you know, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. You know, if they're of the world, we're not supposed to be friends with them. And that's one of my big things. I want nothing to do with worldly people at all. So Yeah, I agree with that. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible and condemning. You know, that's you're judging people. You know, you need to you need to smile more and tell people that you love them and stuff. Sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just realized throughout the whole debunking of uh, Steve Anderson's movie, we never actually smiled. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, time, a few times we laughed. Yeah. You know. Uh huh. <laughs> Should have just been on, been on screen, been like, he's not talking about the feet or the iron. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of a scary face, Tim. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got a question for everybody. All um, right. Predictions on what Anderson's cult is going to do next. <laughs> oh, man. Um. Hmm. I think they might actually pull something next. I don't know. Very good question. 
Um, I've, I've been feeling for a very long time that he's going to be part of some kind of uh, false flag type of a deal, you know, some kind of a, I mean, he was in that one movie or the video by the BBC and they showed him being given an AR-15 and, and he was all, you know, kind of out of it. And he said, you know, about how it's the gift that keeps on giving. And then he, <laughs> you know, laughed. Yeah, I remember and that. I thought, That's really weird. So I, I don't know. I think that, you know, Anderson's been getting a lot of heat, um, you know, from different people. And, uh, you know, so they've kind of had to back off a little bit. And, of course, you know, we brought out the whole thing about Anderson being involved with the Universal One Church. Mm-hmm. But I just I have this feeling that he's because, again, he does anything at all. And the news media will link him to King James Bible believing Christians every yep. single time. And so I just feel that, the you know, that's why I've stayed on Anderson so hard over the years. And people say I'm obsessed with him. No, I'm not. It's just that I see I will. I've always wanted to put a big difference between us and his movement so that when something happens, we can say, hey, we've been exposing this guy for years. We're not part of him. Yeah. That goes, that goes with me too, with the whole street preaching movement. Ruben Israel, good example of that, Mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're tied in somehow, you know, and that's why I expose those guys so much is because I want to show everybody that I'm not part of that group. Okay. They're wicked. They're going to hell. They believe a different gospel than we do. They believe in salvation by works, by imitation. And we're not part of that group and they're not associated with us. Same with Steven Anderson. That's why Brian does all the videos like he does. And that's why I do the ones against these works salvation people. You know, he goes after more of the easy believism people. I go after more of the work salvation types, you know, because that's what I came out of. So I want to put much separation from them and show, hey, we're not like them. You know, that's not us. They're not part of us, you know. And I do believe Reuben Israel at some point is going to snap on somebody, you know, just like Steven Anderson could do the same thing. I mean, you look at what this guy does out on the streets. He curses people. I mean, he calls them, you know, one video, I, I try not to repeat it, but he called one girl a slut bag, you know, in one video. And he said, I hope you get a staph infection and I hope you get AIDS and, you know, just some very nasty and vile things. And and I think at one point you have this one, you have this one kid, Dean Saxton, that runs around with him. He was ripping up a Quran with his teeth in front of a group of Muslims on YouTube. And, and, you know, and just like with Stephen Anderson, they could very well be part of a false flag as well. You know, just like the Westboro Baptist Church, they're, they're tied in to them too as well. They'll sit there and say, I speak against Westboro Baptist is being part. They're part of the street preaching nonsense. They're not part of it. They are. So um, just, I think they could do some sort of false flag thing and get sodomites or something like that and say, see, Christians are hateful and they're, you know, they're murderous, they're vicious. And guess what? That's going to fall on us. And that's why I expose them. And that's why Brian exposes Stephen Harrison the way he does. So I just want to make that point. Yeah, yeah, it needs to be done. The the the, the scriptures call us to expose uh, false teachers and things like that. And when you have a platform like YouTube where Anderson's pumping out video after video, movie after movie all the time, they're getting like 60, 70,000 views a piece. You need to have something there to counteract that to get you know a decent amount of views to show that he's, he's a flat out liar. You know, it's um, it's it's ridiculous just how how much of a a voice the the platform gives him and stuff like that and all the nasty stuff he he says and does. And yet, you know, he still is just getting views galore on his videos and subscriber count keeps jumping up there. Like Jeremy, you just told me 90,000. And the other day I looked, it was just like 86,000. So, I mean, that's insane. Mm hmm. Right. Exactly. And yeah, we should, we shouldn't be silent. Like we shouldn't let them silence us. I mean, I don't, I don't talk much anyway, but <laughs> you know, we shouldn't be afraid to talk about these things to actually expose it. You know, when something comes out like this, like Babylon USA, nope, it's Rome, you know, publicly expose it. We shouldn't be afraid to do that. You know? So. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Amen. 
one guy asked in the comments, how do I repent? Well, you got to come to the Lord as a sinner. Um, you know, I'm going to share this with you real quick while I got my Bible pulled up. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. I would say we could uh, wrap this up with it. basically a salvation message because, you know, darn well, that's going to, it's either going to yep. get some of Anderson's followers saved or they're going to be foaming out the mouth. Either, either way, we win. So, all right. My favorite passage to go to to prove salvation, you know, like to, to show somebody how to get saved is this. It's Matthew 15. It's not the go it's, people say, well, that's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just hold on and let me explain myself first before you get all excited and wet your pants. Good grief. Because <laughs> I get that a lot from people. They'll say, why don't you always go to Matthew 15 for salvation? You know, I'm going to show you why. All right. I'm going to start in verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for he, she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. By the way, if you're not dispensational, you got a problem there. Um, then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Do you realize what Jesus Christ has called that woman? you got to remember, this is a Canaan woman. She's black. You realize what she just called her? A dog. And did she scream hate speech? Nope. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. All right, and I'm going to break this down for you. She came to Jesus Christ and realized what she was before him, a dog. You got to get to that point. You got to get low enough and realize that you are no good. You're worthless. Jesus doesn't see anything in you. Okay. Worth saving. Your damnation is just. So what do you do at that point? Admit that you're a sinner. Admit that you're a dog. Call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. I mean, admit that you're a sinner. Admit that you're worthless. That you deserve hell. And you call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. God be merciful to me, a sinner. It's that simple. So yeah, and, uh, and put put your face faith in First uh, Corinthians fifteen verses one through four. Yep. Uh, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. See, what Jeremy just said, you better be admitting that you're a dog. You better be admitting that you are a sinner and having a godly sorrow over that. If you don't, then you are believing in vain, like it says right here. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You must put your faith in that, that he did that for you and your personal sins against God, and you will be saved. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Um, you know, another good, another good verse is 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, not Catholic thing of he has to be continually sacrificed. He once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust. It's He's the just, we're the unjust. You know, that he yep. might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. You know, so you see the whole Godhead there, by the way, too, in that verse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, basically when I got saved, you know, I mean, um, I was in the whole street preaching thing and I thought I was having to save myself. And I and, I, and you know what? It made me worse as a person, as a sinner. I slipped more worrying about my sins than I did anything else. You know, worrying about keeping myself saved. And and one night I just got down, I just got down on my bed and you know laid there, and tremendous you know agony, and just fear, just this overwhelming fear came upon me. And I, I was like, "There's nothing I can do to save one to hell." You know, and I cried. I said, and I just begged God for mercy at that point. I just said, God, just be merciful to me, a sinner. God, please save me. Have mercy on me. You know, and at that point, 
things changed. And then I I got away from the cult shortly after that. It's kind of amazing how that works. You know, I just begged God for mercy on my bed one night because I was so scared of going to hell. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yep. So if you're having doubts out there about, you know, salvation, it's simple. Jesus Christ paid for your sins. He died. He was buried. He rose again. His, his blood pays for your sins. And all you have to do is admit that you're a sinner, realize that you deserve hell, and put your faith in him. Ask God to save you. That's all there is to it. Plain and simple. There's nothing else to it. You don't have to do anything to keep yourself saved or anything like that. The Holy Spirit will come in and guide you into all truth, John 16, 13. You will be sanctified through the word, John 17, 17. So it's, that's, how, that's how you will cleanse your way. You know, Psalm says, you know, how will a young man cleanse his way by the word? You know, mm -hmm. so that's how your life will clean up, by being sanctified by the word. The Holy Spirit will come in and guide you into all truth by teaching you the word of God. And that's what he's done with me. That's what he's done with Brian. That's done it, Jake. That's what he's done with Jake and Tim and everybody else. You know, that's truly born again. So, you get sanctified by the Word, and that's how your life will clean up. What happened with me? Amen. Yep. All right, and with with that being said, I guess um, we'll we'll go ahead and uh, wrap this up. Unless uh, any uh, any last comments, any, any of you uh, guys want to go over? Or? No, I think I'm okay. Unless anybody else got anything they want to say. Really, the last thing I guess I'll say is case in point: stay far, far away from Stephen Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Stay far, far away from the street preachers. They are in it with him. I promise you. <laughs> for for a second there, when your computer lagged, I thought you're like your camera zoomed in, like you know one of those film <laughs> tricks. Far, far away. <laughs> Once upon a time in a land far, far away, whatever it's called. <laughs> oh, it goes. The little Star Wars thing, whatever. Yeah. I don't remember how it goes now. But anyway, um, I want to say thank you to everybody that's helped me, you know, in the past month or so. Um, and yeah, I appreciate it a lot. And uh, I want to say I appreciate all you guys for being my friends and my brothers and uh, everybody in the comments. Thank you for all your support. And I love you. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate all you brethren out there too. And and on on that same note, please be sure and um, uh, share this video around debunking this whole thing. If you encounter any uh, young uh, brothers in Christ that are possibly being carried about by every wind of doctrine, you know, as a babe in Christ, uh, usually it usually tends to happen to uh, brethren that are new in the faith. So I would definitely recommend sharing this around with anyone who uh, may need it. Yep. All right. With that, with that being said, we will see all you brethren next week. Be sure and stay tuned for the next episode. <laughs> and now, now for a word from our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right. Good night, brethren. <laughs>